engage. Welcome <laughs> to High Rollers Dungeons and Dragons, the D&D show here on twitch.tv forward slash Oscast, as well as twitch.tv forward slash High Rollers D&D, if you're watching it over there. Welcome to a very sunny weekend here in the UK, yeah. as we sit down in a very cool air-conditioned room to roll some dice and play some Dungeons and Dragons. I'm very happy right Everyone now. Everyone should yeah. be really happy and excited to play a cool <laughs> game with their friends. We are so happy! happy. We play it. like, yeah! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Joining me this week, we have... <laughs> Rhiannon. Hello! Trot. And Kim. Hi! No. Tommy B. No, not Tommy B. Tommy H. <laughs> wow! Wow! wow. wow. So you have to say Tommy B! Oh my god! Tommy H. Alright, thanks, Terps. <laughs> yeah, that's Whoa. fair. No, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, he was so happy to be here. I, yeah. I genuinely, it was like just a <laughs> slip of the tongue. I'm so used to saying Tommy we B. Were, we were talking about Foley ship right before we went. Wait, Tom. Tom. No. no. no I'm going to go, go, go bring Tom Bates in. No, he's going to play. Tom, he's he's play Tom Bates is here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Before we crack on with today's game, a couple of quick things to talk about. Yes. Chris Trot, tell us about our sponsors. <gasps> oh, oh, yeah. God. He's got, I saw, ah, there's multiple the pieces of paper. Okay. You've got to get quicker at these, buddy. Like, I'm not even joking. Because D&D Beyond is packed full of extremely useful tools to get you playing D&D 5th edition quickly, who better to relay some of this most intriguing features than a true Erosian scholar, Nova. V'ger. V'ger. <laughs> Everyone says American. I am Vigier. truly honoured to assume this role for you now. Oh. I hope I do her justice. Okay. Mark is our resident DM. Oh. Do you mind setting the scene with a few descriptors oh. to really immerse our audience? <laughs> Tom, you also have a small Why does this say Merkin? Why do I not have a role in this? <laughs> Tom is a poo head. It says on <laughs> At least he doesn't say Tom B. So if you could kick things off, please. Uh, Mark. Okay. The clicks of small footsteps echo down a candlelit corridor as a small blue-skinned woman dressed in elaborate scholarly attire skips up an imposing wooden door. With a creak, the air ganassi pushes it open, her eyes widening at the sight beyond. A vast room filled with grand bookcases stretching far back into the darkness. There, resting atop a pedestal beneath a suspended sign that reads, Category Planar Worlds, is the very book she's been looking for. D&D Beyond. <laughs> She rushes to the book, lifting it with her hands Whoa. and flicking through the pages at light speed. I'm so jealous! Here I am with my pathetic little ink pen and parchment, but this plane has access to digital tools that allow them to play some sort of role-playing game! <laughs> oh, I love making stuff up! Just think how quickly I could transcribe literally every waking moment if I had one of these! <laughs> Nova flops on the floor, book firmly rested on her cross legs. <laughs> Wondered where that was going. Her head, her head looms closer to the page, lapping up every detail. Fascinating! Access to the core rule sets absolutely free! And every new module is available when they're released by wizards! Her note-taking becomes almost manic, her scrawls ineligible to all beside her. Dungeon masters can quickly make fun encounters on the fly with an encounter builder! Players manage their character live with an interactive sheet, updating stats on the fly with automatic adjustments when leveling up! Quick access to vast troves of information with pop-ups! Just tap anything to get the rules for it! Oh my, it's all too much! See, Eska, help me! <laughs> she no she's noticeably salivating, slack jawed. <laughs> <laughs> Unaware of a presence behind her. Ahem. Oh, Sentry, what are you doing here? <laughs> uh, looking through DMD Beyond again? We need you, Nova. Why? You can't be daydreaming about features that are beyond mortals. We need to save Quill. Nova looks desperate, <laughs> eagerly trying to find pages to show Sentry. But, but mortals can use this. They have access to so many useful tools. Right here Sid is dmdbeyond.com. That doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sorry, Nova. We have to go! With ease, Sentry <laughs> bends down and scoops up Nova in her arms. As much as Nova resists, the book cascades to the floor as Sentry stomps through the door. d, &D Beyond! <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> scene. Thanks, and scene. Thanks, guys. It really helped. There Thank you, go. Chris Trot. Thank you, d, &D Beyond. <laughs> I'm not clapping that. Thank you <laughs> so much, d, &D Beyond. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Sentry. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> sorry, Brian. Sorry, sorry, Brian. Sorry, Adam. Sorry, everyone. Really. Um, right. After that lovely performance, Brand. 
brand new shirts. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Store.yogscast.com. We have a brand new shirt. We have a Century design, Century. which Rhiannon is wearing. Whoop, whoop, uh, you can see it's whoop. got a little echo and her axe and then plants to represent her Oath of the Ancient. So if you're yeah. into kind of like your your kind of nature what? oaths and stuff. That's pretty cool. Plant and then Tom is wearing our brand new Paladin shirt. And it's awesome. For any future Badass. Paladins it's out incredible. there. Store.yogscast.com. Go to the High Rollers collection. Uh, you can get it there. Don't Here forget, is a bundle deal. Bundle deal. You can get them both at the same time. These are limited. Once the pre-orders for these end, that's it. No more. So make sure you pick them up ASAP yeah. um, and get those orders in. If you use the code High Rollers, is it just High Rollers? Yeah, mm -hmm. High Rollers. Oh, you get ten percent off anything you order. That includes other stuff on the store. It doesn't just have to be High Rollers stuff. Yeah. It can be there are the some Yogscast brand specific stuff that are only up for limited. There's a new tankard that's yep. out. And Yogcon I stuffs. Think, is it, does it stop today maybe? I don't there's know. There's a bunch of stuff. But there's a bunch of Yogcon stuff there. Too. Bunch of Yogcon stuff. Booth's got a new shirt out with a creepy Mr. Blobby on it. You can creepy. get that too. Um, and new shirt. Cool, thanks. New hat film <laughs> shirt as well. I forgot about Fox that one. Fox 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 shirt. Fox Fox not even here. Fox Get them all. Fox it's because I could just remember it because it's got a creepy Mr. Blobby on it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. most important thing is you get 10% off the whole order. If you order over £100, I think it is also free worldwide shipping. So if you're out in the US, wow, our US store doesn't have a lot of stuff on it right now, but if you order from the UK store, do like a big get your mates together, do a big group order, you can get 100 if you order over $100 nice. worldwide shipping free. So Treat there you go. Yourself. Treat yourself. yourself. And then last, but certainly not least, don't forget that straight after this stream, there's more D&D &D over on twitch.tv forward slash D&D with us. We're going to be playing through our brand new miniseries, Lightfall's Descent. It's a return to the Lightfall characters, and they're in hell. So come and watch yeah. that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. It's like straight after devilish. this, like literally five minutes. Go over to the D&D channel. Go show that High Rollers community support over there. Yeah. Um, and we'll see you there for that. With that, let's run the Aromis intro video. Welcome back to Erois. Uh, Last time on Erois, the group, having returned their guardian paladin to life, Sentry, being resurrected within the Midwife's Forged, discussed several matters, including the fate of Quillac Ad Kolar, mm. revealing the information to Sentry who had not known of his death, as well as Nova's recent communication with Callus Starbane, tyrant and Slayer of the Goddess Siaska. Super sexy Slayer. Did the midwife's forge was used to repair Piri's watch and forge Ayla a new hammer. And with Piri's new watch repaired, it was revealed he had the ability to teleport the group to the sky city of Gusthaven. We bid farewell to Skaldi, Araya, and Scorb. And oh yeah, Scorb, yeah. Oh, nearly <laughs> nearly <laughs> saying goodbye to Quill's body, if not for a kindly dungeon master. Yeah. But we also say hello to Smeek, a new yeah. guy who has become attached to the party and Ayla in particular. Mm. The son I never wanted. Arriving in <laughs> Gusthaven, Piri led you through a Cypher Academy safe house, only to find it had been robbed and occupied by some very uncouth folk. A battle ensued that resulted in the party meeting with the Gusthaven City Watch. After investigations and a brief lesson about immigration control, the party removed the flower crown from Lucius and had him reveal his presence to the guard. Shortly thereafter, a mage appeared to confirm Lucius's identity and to reveal some particularly tragic news. Taking him to his home, the Elanasto estate is gone, destroyed down to its foundations and timbers. And with that, we're going to begin the episode. But not before noting that tomorrow marks one year of Erois. We've been Whoa. doing it. Oh, yeah. So we're 
we're going to have a little cake in the break. We'll bring that cake out when we... Cake in the break. Uh, cake cake break. Cake break. Cake break. Cake break. One year. Awesome. But one year. Yeah. So thank you all for supporting us uh, and being with this cool journey, D&D story. Yeah. But my question is, I guess I will set the scene once more. The sky city of Gusthaven is beautiful, enchanted city. Everything here is made very precisely and with great purpose. Every house is as big as it needs to be. The streets are clean and covered in various colored pennants and banners and flags that just gently sway in a, in a soft breeze. But the sight before you is less than comfortable or charming. You see a large swathe of land and once there would have once stood a grand mansion there is now only blackened timbers, broken stone and rubble and debris. You mm. can see that there are various mansions nearby, several of which have taken some form of damage that is now being repaired. Um, but the rest of you see it before and just kind of half burnt off, encrusted with black soot is a black, uh, is, a, is a plaque, a brass plaque, uh, which reads Elanasto, buried, half buried in the ground. Is it like smoking? Is it like no? It's not smoking. So this this is like whatever the... happened here happened some time ago. <laughs> Sorry, I know this is really inappropriate, but <laughs> the way you described it was like, and there's a blackened brass rubbing. You expect that? I, I was expecting like another thing, like and also that final piece over there explodes. <laughs> 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 no, this is not smouldering. It's not smoking. Okay. Whatever happened here happened a while, happened a while ago. Uh, and you are, yeah, you don't, you don't know the circumstances. You do have several contingents of the watch. There's two things I'm going to quickly clarify. I'm going to change from last week. Uh, that is that the watch, I think I described them as having blue and silver uniforms last time. They're actually black and white, the uniforms. Um, okay. Like a very crisp and black and white uniform, like a police uniform uh, with half plate armor over the top. Um, and then the mage with them has black and white robes and carries a long staff engraved with... Um, the symbol of Gusthaven itself, which is kind of like a, a sky city, basically, like an outline, the Aurorus logo, basically. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and he carries a staff with a small medallion engraved with that. Uh, and this elderly high elf, uh, the mage, the, uh, is with you. Uh, for Lucius's benefit, one thing you would know about Gusthaven is um, the, the mage must be what is called a stave, or a royal stave which is basically partial administrator, partial magistrate of Gusthaven. They're often responsible for laws, um, but also just general city governance, and they work directly with the Sky Prince himself. The council. They're not really a council, they're like advisors. They're like the, the, the elite magical advisors. Okay. Um, and then the watch are called badgers because they flash their badges and they wear black and white. Ooh. They're not aggressive <laughs> territorial animals. <laughs> no, no, maybe they could be. Uh, there are and also black and white. there is also a section of the city watch called Wands, who are kind of like investigators. They're like detectives, but they're generally magical, and they're called Wands, Royal Wands. Oh, that's cool. Um, I think last time Lucius was very excited to show everybody the estate yes. and be like, <clears throat> "You're going to love it." And I turn the corner, and I'm, I think for a while I am just stunned to silence and almost swaying on the spot. As if I'm about to faint. Mm -hmm. I think Sentry just put a hand on Lucius's shoulder and just no. calmly. No, this can't. This isn't right. Uh, what? We will need to discuss the matters um, at the Royal Palace, but I'm afraid that there was a terrible accident weeks ago now. Weeks? Yes. Uh, it was a few days after we heard the news of an airship crash, uh, the one that you were involved with, I assume. Your father retreated to the manor and to his workshop, and, well, we did not hear from him for is several he, days. Is he alive? And the mage, the stave, goes deathly quiet. Please, I'm, tell me something. I'm afraid that uh, Virian, uh, Elowin, and Adea Elanasto were inside the house when the explosion erupted. It must have been very powerfully, ma very magically powerful. Several of the house staff were also involved, as were various visitors renting accommodations. I'm afraid that they, they were all died. And, um, we thought that you were also lost to us, uh, Lord Elanesto. However, clearly that is not the case. As he's talking, Lewis, uh, Lu Lewis? <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> uh, Lucius just slumps and faints. Because mm -hmm. he just can't handle that information. You just kind of like collapse your knees and then poof, onto the ground. Pass out. 
So you just watch Lucius just turn deathly pale and then just whoop. even more pale. Yeah. <clears throat> I must. I felt it better to get this out of the way because there will be some difficult questions in the time to come. Uh, you will need to accompany me and the guards to the royal palace. There are some matters that need to be discussed. We also need to ensure that you all have your mark of uh, entry. So we are aware of your presence and you will not be accosted by guards further. Kayla okay. will gently pick up Lucius. Mm -hmm. Can I scoop and just, him up? Yeah, just like... If you would follow me. And the, uh, the stave leads you now away from the estate. Um, yeah, and you guys just make your way through. Once you turn away, and it seems that whatever damage was caused to the Alanasto estate, it did kind of affect some nearby other noble houses, but it is very concentrated. It was like an explosion in a sudden area. There's no fire that spread massively or, or significant damage elsewhere. And you begin making your way through. Making your way through uh, the what you assume is some sort of noble quarter. Many of the houses in this air part of the city seem to be larger, grander, but not much more so. Many of the houses here sh share many similar traits and even places that look like they belong to working class are far greater than anything you've seen in the lowlands. You know, they're very well built, beautiful windows, flower boxes. Um, and you notice a couple of common themes, which is almost every building here has some sort of rooftop garden uh, where you can see vegetables or things being grown. Um, or, and they also have brightly colored pennants everywhere, like kind of like bright flags or banners and things like that. And a lot of them bear uh, the royal crest, which is the outline of the sky city, but with a star in the middle of it. And you begin making your way through the city streets towards what is clearly an elevated middle part of the city itself. If you imagine like the city as an island, the central part of it is raised up um, and you have to pass through several gated barriers that like, kind of spiral around to a large palace-like citadel. And it's from here, at the very top of its tallest tower, you can see this network of metal rods and orbs that kind of cascades over the rest of the city, spreads out like a almost like a large umbrella, like a kind of like spider's web above the city itself. Um, and from that, a, print, a kind of an aura of good weather is being projected. And you can see that on some parts of the, the city, you can actually see rain clouds have been kind of conjured and it's now raining on mm. parts of the city. Very cool. You are led up through, and every time you pass through these gates, you can see, you can see the city watch, these uh, black and white uh, watch offices. But there's never many of them. There's maybe like two or three. Having passed through places like Cali's Rest where you saw a much bigger military presence, the streets here, you don't really see any patrolling militiamen. You just see them like one or two on guard posts here and there. Um, and people just walk amongst the streets. Like nobody's stopped from going anywhere. Everybody is in good spirits. Most people seem quite happy as they're making their way around. Everybody is actually reasonably well dressed. Even folks, again, if you, you know, you might see some, some workers or, or lower kind of class folk, but they're all still very well dressed. Uh, they all still have kind of very well made garments. Um, not particularly fashionable, but they're all well made and, and you know, tidy and kept neat. Are they mostly high elves? It's actually quite mixed. There is predominantly high elves. You'd probably estimate that like 60, 70% of the population is, is high elves okay. or half elves. And it's kind of hard to tell the difference sometimes. Many of the half elves have such strong elven lineage that you, you probably wouldn't be able to tell them at a glance. Okay. Um, but the rest of it is a good mix of humans, halflings. Um, you see some dwarves. You see tieflings, ASMR. You see like a big mix of other races, but maybe just like one or two. Um, some of them don't look like residents, some of them are clearly travellers. They wear more lowland style clothing, they look a bit dirtier or they bit, look a bit rougher. Um, but generally they're kind of just, yeah, they're just watched and, and people seem fairly safe with them. Mm. Um, you, all, you probably would actually notice maybe in the distance somewhere like one or two guardians, but they seem to just be carrying out fairly like mundane tasks, normally with a crew. So you might see um, airship crew passing to and fro transporting goods and one or two of these crews at least have a guardian on board who is carrying cargo or maybe is acting as a bodyguard um, in more kind of combat unit style. Okay. Um, but you are eventually led up to a grand palace. The walls are iridescent. They seem to shimmer and glow in light as the light kind of passes 
over amongst across the town, the walls shimmer and glow as if made from a, an unusual stone. Um, and you are led inside by this, you know, so far, I think, I don't think I named this mage guy, I don't think I gave you a name for him. Um, so far this unnamed mage who leads you in. Uh, he takes you in through a large set of double doors where there are royal guards. Unlike the city watch, these guys, uh, these high elves, men and women, are in full plate armor, each with a tabard bearing the royal crest. Mm -hmm. This is in a dark blue, like this royal tabard. Okay. Um, and their, their equipment looks considerably better. Uh, you are led into a grand kind of courtroom-esque um, and it's actually one of one of the first rooms you enter when you enter the palace. And there is a long chamber with seating, plush kind of like cushion seating, where many citizens are sat down. Um, and you can see that at the far end there is a circular table. There is a grand throne at one end and then several chairs around it. And there is a meeting taking place, an open forum. Oh, okay. And you see at the far end uh, that there is a very handsome male uh, high elf you would imagine quite young, not that dissimilar to Lucius in age. Um, you know, kind of in a human equivalent, maybe like young 20s. Uh, dark hair, unlike uh, Lucius's blonde, but kind of kept very long. Um, there is a crown upon his head, this beautiful silver crown with a large diamond at its center. Um, behind him, resting against the throne, is a very large great sword, which is kind of carved from a silvery metal, and its pommel is shaped like a star clutching a diamond as well. Nice. Um, and he's wearing armor with very regal robes, and he is communicating with what looks to be a mixture of citizens, a couple of these mages, a couple of guards, and they're having some sort of discussion. Uh, the stave with you kind of gestures towards you, Ayla, and m motions for you to come over to a side room where you can see there's like almost like a private couch um, to lay Lucius down. And there are several chairs in there as well. So uh, I wouldn't be passed out that amount of time. Okay, so you've probably so, woken up like on the en route. Yeah, and it would okay. have just been pained whimpering, like the stuff that's horrible to listen to. Like, like a bit of sniffling and sort yeah, of like... Yeah, it's like you've heard Lucius cry before, but it's not like that. This is like a futile, yeah. horrible... Like that kind of dry, dry sob. Yeah, that's just like given up kind of... Okay. I'll probably just be like fussing around Lucius. Like, I feel like comfort Ayla him, probably would have like... just kept hold of him and not let him walk anyway. It's a total not... recoil. So. You're just like kind of curled up in Ayla's arms. It's a and... refusal of mm -hmm. acceptance. I'd be like trying to administer tissues and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and just nothing. Um, the stave whispers more to you guys than Lucius, seeing kind of the state Lucius is in. I will need to inform his majesty uh, of what's happened. This is, I should clarify, Master Lord Elanastor's reappearance is significant. We were told that he had died, that his body had been witnessed as part of a scrying. This is a significant matter. I must ask you to stay here. Who told you that? Uh, those details will come clear in time. I'm not sure if I can share them with you right now, but I will inquire with the king and see what you can be told. You may be asked, you may be asked to step forward and speak with his majesty. Uh, Sky Prince Aradan, uh, you should refer to him as your majesty, or Sky Prince Aradan. Sky Prince. We ask that you do display respect. He is the ruler of this city. I'm gonna take a back seat here, just, you know, inevitably gonna word vomit something really mean, you know? Yeah, I feel like the same. <clears throat> uh, Guardian, <laughs> you may wish to place your, uh, the body you are carrying in the side room. I would not wish to bring something like that in front of the prince. Okay, as long as he's safe. Yes, yes, yes. I, I can have a guard stationed outside the room, if you wish. That would be... That would put my mind at ease, yes, thank yes, you. very well. Yes, if you would make, wait here, uh, the, the prince will call you forth. Okay. And he gestures. Uh, he does go over and speak to a guard. Uh, a, fem a woman, uh, kind of in full plate armour, steps up and is like looks to you and says, like, Guardian, I'm more than happy to guard over your, your friend. Thank you. Very well. She kind of steps in front of the doorway, closes it, and then stands guard, basically. You begin to hear smatterings of conversation of whatever this prince and this council or whoever it is he's speaking to. Um, you can hear kind of snippets of conversation 
uh, a guard um, kind of steps up from the crowd and makes his way over um, and delivers a report. You hear kind of muffled kind of like phrasing, but generally you get the gist. Uh, the man is like, Your Highness, as you know, we will be passing across the, uh, we will be crossing across the Dawn, the Dawn Blades soon. My scouts have reported that a, a dragon has been sighted in the area. We should be cautious. We may wish to send an advanced party to deal with it. Uh, obviously, as we're flying through that court cause, and, and then the prince kind of listens. It's like, yes, yes, very well. Um, if you can file your, your reports, uh, give us as much information as you can, and then liaise with the generals to ensure that, uh, if necessary, a party can be sent out. Um, the, does he sound extremely like confident when he's talking, or is he like... Yeah, make an insight check for me. Okay. If you're like trying to get a bigger bead on this guy. Yeah, I kind of want to see if he's like new to it mm. or something. Uh, 14. 14. There is a confidence there, but there is still... You get the sense that he's very stiff. Hmm. Um, you can see that there is definitely a kind of a forced confidence, but there is confidence. Yeah. But there is definitely... He is putting on airs, you know, he's playing the role yeah. to an extent, um, but very well. And, yeah, and okay. to an extent where you're pretty convinced he is capable, um, but perhaps this is a little new to him. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, and he kind of waves that away. There is uh, some other report, a citizen is like uh, a, a kind of a business looking elf, a very sharp kind of tailored uniform. Uh, my liege, your majesty, I must, I must reiterate the danger that this, this person presents. This is now three businesses that they've attacked. They have attacked workers, they have stolen supplies. The guard must make this moon, this moon star a priority. Whoever they are, more must be done. I've already, I've already established with the City Watch that this is an urgent priority, Minister. It is being looked into, I can assure you. Uh, she has proved elusive to capture. Well, something must be done, Sully. I We've lost dozens of cargo shipments to her. Something must be done. I understand. I hear your concerns. And then the, the robed mage eventually steps up, um, and you can see the prince looks a little quizzical. He leans in, and something is whispered in his ear. And you see the, the prince, his eyes kind of go wide. No, that's impossible. Are you sure? All right. Um, yeah. Can we get Anastasia? All right. All right. Uh, what was the, what's the other? Bellinor. Send for Bellinor. All right. Um, and you say that he has companions with him. All right. Bring him. Bring him. But yeah. Yes. <clears throat> uh, and you see the kind of the the, the mage steps back, and the prince is, turns to the rest of the gathered. Like, my deepest apologies, wardens and council. Something urgent has come up. I must suspend today's forum. Citizens, and he kind of addresses the crowd. My deepest apologies. I am not able to take your questions or concerns today. An urgent matter concerning one of our noble families has arisen, and I must attend to it immediately. The forum will resume tomorrow, and I will double the duration so that I may hear any missed communications from today. Thank you so much for your time. And you see the crowd kind of gather and there's murmurs as they begin filtering out. And the guard basically don't let anybody linger. They start kind of gently persuading people to leave. Mm. You kind of see a couple of elderly elves like, but I have something to speak with. It's like, the prince will hear them tomorrow. Come along. And kind of shuffles them outside. Yeah. And then it's just <laughs> you guys left. It's you, the prince, and then several uh, royal guard and this robed mage. And the prince goes... I, and he starts coming down to you rather than coming up, bringing, summoning you. He comes oh, okay. down and he beelines directly for Lucius. And he kind of... What state is Lucius in at this point? His, his head's on the floor, he's slumped. So he's just like lying on There's the no floor? No, looking down. Okay, but standing up, but just like just looking down. sobbing to himself. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be ready to just catch him if he falls over. <laughs> so you're like stood behind him like this. I'm just like, ball. I'm still trying to like give him tissues and like... So we can burn his, but Lucius thinks he's not dead. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the Sky Prince kind of moves up and looks at Lucius directly, almost disbelieving it, almost, almost like checking to see if he's real. And then he kind of looks down and tries to catch Lucius's face. Lucius? Is it really you? Uh, I wish it wasn't. 
And you, and you've met probably when you were younger, much when you were much younger, like boys, like That's what I recognize ten and eleven. Yeah, you recognize him. Like you're a noble family. You would have gone to his, you know, uh, his birthday or something like that, or like when he was, you know, announced as the the prince heir. You probably would have gone to a celebration of it. You know, you probably were at meetings when his father and your father were discussing matters and things like that. So, so you, acquaintances you, rather than yeah, I think I think so. I think you would know each other, but maybe not close, close friends because he's always been kept separate because he is royalty. Okay, um, but you, yeah, you know Aridan. He is uh, he is Prince Aridan Erison Peloni Star Sorrow is his full title. Have I? <laughs> nice. I'm not going to write that down. Do I, <laughs> last word. Has he been prince since I've been away? No, he was his father was king. Always... Well, no, no, he would have been prince. No, sorry, because you you've not been gone that long. Um, I keep thinking that Lucius has been gone ages and he hasn't. Uh, so he, he, was, he was prince he when you left. <laughs> he, he was prince when you left. Um, you know that, he, in fact, that's probably the last time you saw him was his father's funeral, which was about three, four years ago. Okay. Um, and, and he even, he's like, I think the last time I saw you was at father's funeral. And he kind of looks around. Elidus, is this... I'm so sorry, Lucius. I'm, I'm so sorry. I... We, there wasn't the accident. Your, your father, when he heard about the airship, when we heard news of the airship, um, he retreated into himself. He threw himself into his work and kept saying that he had a new project, uh, something to do with refining, something your sister was working on with him. He was, he just withdrew from the world. Uh, and then the accident happened. And, well, we, we tried to, to locate you just to see if you'd survived. And, well, some of the staves said that you, would, you, would, you were dead, that they'd seen your body. Um, we thought you were dead. Sir, with all due respect, I, I don't think I can handle this right now. Um, yes, I understand. Uh, I, I do understand, but there are a few matters. The fact that you are here, that that somebody has reported your death to us is, is significant. Perhaps you should, perhaps you should lie down for some time. I, I can ask your traveling companions some questions. Yes, yeah, it's, it's always vacant, like yeah. a delayed response kind of thing. Yeah, yes, you're right, I, I should, so, but, sorry. But there are, there are other things we need to discuss, Lucius. The, the lines of succession, there's things about your father's business we need to discuss, but later, later. Um, go and take a rest now. Could, and he kind of like calls forth a guard. Could you escort Lord Elanasto to the guest chambers? Um, and they nod and they offer to take you basically to a, to a bedroom, like a guest bedroom to lay down. Yeah, and I'll do a kind of like, almost like a sleepwalking state. Mm -hmm. Just be carried away. And you can see the prince is visibly shocked at this point. He, he's very kind of taken back. Um, Thank you all uh, for bringing Lucius, Lord Elanastu, back to Gusthaven. I'm terribly sorry that it must be under such odd circumstances. May I ask, um, first of all, how you, how you know him, but also uh, what happened to the airship? For all reports, it crashed and, and he was supposed to have died. Yeah, we were on the airship with him. That's the only reason we know him, really. And then somehow, we managed to survive that, had a bit of a rough time, and now we've ended up here. We've just kind of stuck together since, you know, falling out of the sky. By the way, airships suck. So there is a very loud <coughs> from some of the guards uh, who are kind of like pointing to but the prince doesn't react badly to you. He kind of like. Oh, looks. sorry. Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> there, is a, there is a smirk, like a kind of like a. He kind of is kind of amused by this, you can see, and he's like, it, please, um, Prince Aradan is fine. Uh, so, can I ask your name? Ayla. Just, is it just Ayla? Yep. Very well. Uh, so you were aboard the airship, were you all traveling aboard the airship with, with Lord Elanaste? Not oh, this I one. wasn't, no. I met these guys a little later. Right, um, okay. Uh, so, yourself, what was your name, please? Uh, hi, uh, your majesty. Um, Highness, royally thing. Uh, I'm Nova, Nova Vija, hi. Nova Vija. Prince. Uh, and you were also aboard the airship? You, you travelled with, with Lucius? 
Uh, yeah, well, um, yeah, yeah, that's how we know each other. Crashed. What, why, why did the ship crash? We, we have no information on what happened. Oh, we were attacked, um, I think, by the remnant. And he kind of turns, and you see the robed magister leans in and kind of whispers something. He's like, they are the, the forces of the Court of Shadows, yes? Yeah. Yes, we, obviously we, we do not... I've had reports of, of such things, but amongst the Sky Cities, well, they've never attacked us, um, obviously. And, and Guardian, you, you travelled with Lucius as well? Yes, I was on the same airship when we crashed, yeah. And, and, you, and you survived the crash. Where, where did you land? My scryers couldn't, couldn't tell. Some sort of snowy region, apparently. Oh, Savona. Savona. We yeah. crashed on Savona. On Savona? Yes, I believe, yes. Uh, so we pass over, uh, that's where Gold Throne is, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so you, you travelled all the way from there? And you made your way back here? Well, it's, um, yeah, well. Slight detour. Yeah, a couple of detours. The mage there. kind of leans in and says like, Yes, your majesty, they arrove through some sort of teleportation magic. They have not received their mark of entry. Um, we are still determining exactly what happened. We found them inside one of the warehouses. There had been some sort of incident. Uh, we believe that they may have actually helped us capture one of the, the wind barons. Yeah, we did that. It, yeah, they, they seem bad. Are they, is this something that's been going on here for a while? Uh, Lucius had no idea what was going on. I mean, the nobles of the many houses, uh, a lot of their business would not involve um, these, these matters. The Wind Barons are troublesome. Uh, they are, how best to describe them, um, bandits of a sort. They capture airships, steal cargo, but so far we had not been aware of any activities within the city. So if you have caught them in some sort of dealings here, then I'm very grateful uh, for your assistance in such a matter. There are some matters. Th that is something that perhaps you should speak with my guards about. Um, no doubt they will have some questions for you. My main concern is, is Lucius. Uh, I have not known him very well, but he is a noble son like myself. Now that his family have died, um, he is the lord of his household. There, unfortunately, because we believe Lucius to have been deceased, his family's business assets were sold to other businesses. Um, many of his father's wealth and assets have been liquidated and sold off. Now, there are some measures that I can take, but a large amount of that wealth will probably never be able to be recovered. My intention is to see that compensation is paid by those businesses to Lord Elanasto. It will have to just simply take the form of, of gold, I'm afraid, or, or trade goods. Lucius will still have standing. His noble title will still remain, but with his, with his residence gone, well, it will need to be rebuilt. It will still technically be his in name, but if it is unused, then, then the, city, the city will reclaim it. We have certain laws here in Gusthaven about unoccupied residences. There is also a small matter. There was a... I was holding on to it. Perhaps it was foolish luck, on my, or perhaps it was a bit of foolish hope on my behalf, but his father did leave something for Lucius in the event of his own death. It was recovered from their family bank account here in the Sky City, uh, where his personal funds were kept. Uh, I would give it to him myself, but I'm afraid that my, my business may keep me busy whilst Lucius recovers. If I could ask you to please provide that to him when he awakens. What stave, which stave in particular saw his body? The mage leans forward. That is something we will need to ask. We will investigate. Uh, they, they were in the employ of a business called Margrona Manufacturing. Um, I have summoned their, their head of the family, a high elf called Anastasia, um, but she is not available, so her son, Belenor, will come and speak on her behalf. We will inquire what has happened. Clearly there is some attempt for us to have, to not know that Lord Elanasto was alive. For now, I must ask you all to keep as much information as you can to yourselves. 
What we do not want is that if there is some conspiracy against the Elenastos, that other people become aware of it. The fact that Lucius has returned, well, news of that, hopefully we can keep control of, but eventually people will find out. And if somebody wished him not to return to Gusthaven, as it would imply, then perhaps they will not be so welcome to hear of his return. I heard you mentioning, well, one of your guards mentioning Moonstar earlier. I think the Wind Barons mentioned their name earlier when we confront them. Interesting. In what capacity, Guardian? Um, I think when we, were, when we were talking to the one we captured, right? Um, I think it was people in the street oh, who were street. talking about it. it. Would either be the Wind Barrows or the Moonstar responsible for it. Mm. Do not trouble yourself too much, although if you are... If you are mercenaries, then there is currently a bounty on this individual. <laughs> they believe it to be a woman, although nobody has truly confirmed their identity. Uh, a masked assailant, somebody who is going around attacking various businesses and citizens. Um, some of which are criminal, some of which are legitimate business owners. So we are not quite sure where they stand. So we have currently a bounty out for their arrest. Are they a suspect? In, in the Ilanasto attack currently? The prince looks up like, please understand, Guardian, up until we do not believe that there was any foul play with the tragedy at the manor. The, the explosion definitely occurred within, uh, within Virian's workshop. We know that he had been experimenting with unstable Ethereum to try and develop a new refining process. Okay. But you surely can't rule it out, especially with what's just come to light about Lucius and people reporting him dead. Now that we have, now that Lucius has returned, and there was clearly an attempt to hide his survival, we will investigate both matters. Up until now, however, that we have no reason to suspect anything. But now, yes, you are correct. There is something going on. What this is connected to, I don't know. Gusthaven is a safe city. Please. I do not just say that as a prince. This is a safe place. My people Lucia have... said the same thing to us as soon as we got here and we saw the trouble that was happening. The Wind Barons, I mean, they've not, they've not attacked anybody in the streets. There's not been any, uh, there's not been any thefts. I mean, whatever warehouse you arrived at, how, uh, the warehouse, how did you get inside it? Teleportation went wrong. Deception check. I already said this to the um, yeah. guards. Though. Yeah, you did. It's true, though. Mm. No, it's not. <laughs> the teleportation <laughs> worked exactly right. <laughs> as it was supposed to. That'll be a 10. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what date was this scrying attempt that confirmed Lucius's body? Uh, it was attempted after the... It was scheduled for just before uh, the accident at the manor, um, but as is always the case in Gusthaven, there were delays with many magical uh, activities that need to be done. Um, the weather system in particular was uh, performing inadequately, so repairs were made. Uh, after, obviously, Virian and the rest of the Elanastos died, um, we, made, in, we wanted to ensure the fate of Lucius. We wanted to know if there still remained a head of the Elenasto family. Um, and so I believe it was then that Anastasia Magrona stepped forward and offered her private scryer. She will obviously be our first investigation. She will hold the responsibility for uh, any foul play. So how many days ago was that? It would have been, I mean, weeks, it was a few weeks. weeks ago. So that would have, we would have been probably around like... We would have still been in like, yeah. We're trying to logistically think of where we were. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it was, if it was, you know, three, if it was like a week after the crash, I think, yeah, you were in like Kaylee's, you were kind of on your way to Kaylee's rest around there. On the way to Kaylee's rest, because yeah. I was thinking of like, maybe when we fought the Goliath. Yeah. Or the ghosts. So as you're having this yeah. conversation, there is the doors of a side room burst open and a very tall, athletic, very well-muscled uh, elf, male high elf, steps forward. You can see he's wearing partial armor 
um, and he kind of steps in, not furious, but with a kind of almost an intensity to him. He steps in, it's like, where is he? Where is he? I refuse to believe it until I see him. Where is he? Uh, and oh. then he kind of turns around and he goes, oh, my apologies, Your Majesty. I did not realize you were still in here. And he bows deeply. Abelinor, thank you for the summons. I believe that you will need to speak with Eloise. Uh, Lucius is resting right now. Is it really him, Your Majesty? It, it can't be. My mother scry has said that he, they saw the body. I, I've known him since he was a boy. I, it can't be. And the prince just turns and says, So have I, Belenor, and I can assure you it is Lucius. There is no mistaking that grief when he learned of his family. And you can see this Belenor kind of takes a step back. He's like, I thought he was dead. I can't believe it. Well, something Mother's Scryer must have been paid off or something. It, it can't be her. That will be investigated in time, Belenor, but you will need to go and answer some questions with Eloise now. Of course, Your Majesty, of course. Uh, who are these people? And he kind of like looks around. Um, who are you? Friends of Lucius. Are you the ones that... And he kind of looks, and then he looks to the prince. How do we know that this isn't some sort of ploy, Your Majesty? These lowlanders, they might be up to something. You can see the prince is just... Gonna say something dumb, someone step in. Please, gonna say something dumb. Go ahead. Okay. And who are you to Lucius, exactly? Who am I? I've known Lucius since we were boys. We grew up together, we played together. We, we trained together as, as sky jousters. Then tell me why you seem so annoyed at the fact that you find out that he's still I'm alive. Not annoyed? Annoyed? How dare you, you filthy lowland elf! I excuse oh. me. And you can see he's bristled, like like him and Ayla are like, like he's squaring up. Lightning is crackling. And he's, <laughs> he, he looks strong, like he's yeah. well muscled, uh, and he's he stands ready, and he's he's, he's he, offended. Like, stand next to Ayla, just yeah. like. Uh, your Majesty. The, <laughs> at this point, like when Piri looks over, you can see that the prince has merely stepped over towards his throne picks up the great sword and then begins making his way back to the confrontation but very calmly and very slowly um and this belinor kind of looks down at you and is just like i have known him since he was a boy how dare you in incite that i'm offended that i'm angry at his i'm relieved you do not understand what would you know he's not mentioned you at all in the weeks we've been traveling with him he kind of his eyes kind of dark to Nova. I'm not surprised. I wasn't exactly always a very nice young man, but I've still known him for a long time. I didn't say we were friends, just that I knew him. Not that it's any of your business, Ganassi. It actually it is my business. He's a friend of ours. That doesn't make my past with him your business. And you can see the prince now returns. As if you've been a dick. Poof, <laughs> slams the tip of the great sword on the ground. And as the tip hits the stone, this kind of bright light kind of shatters out. Enough! These people are here as guests as a law of a lord of Gusthaven, Belenor. Show them your respect. <clears throat> Very well. Eloise, you wish to speak with me? I did indeed, Lord Belenor. Although I would prefer to speak with your mother, although it seems she is absent for now. She's away on business. Can I insight check? Sure. Dickhead. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> How convenient! That's a 20. Ooh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> whispering. Oh. oh. Everyone else, whispering. just make your own fun. Uh. <laughs> How are we all feeling? Dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Everything's <laughs> fine. This All is fine. Around me are familiar faces. <laughs> Worn out faces. No, don't. The model get the model get muted. <laughs> Do tell. And so with that, the uh, the Belenor, this other, this mus muscular high elf, is basically led away by the, the robed mage, and the prince kind of stands still watching, especially Ayla and Sentry just keeping an eye. Smeek you. Oh yeah, <laughs> Smeek. <Smith. laughs> so Smeek probably would have absolutely, like, as this guy squared up, Smeek would have been, like, on your other leg, like, Nara! 
It's being an M. But I think at this point, like, on his head, like, no. like nobody seems <laughs> to. Have, hands, like, I imagine <laughs> that the elves either haven't noticed, or Smeek has been behaved enough that he's kind of just remained hidden, like beneath everybody's oh. attention. Like he's kind of just been like crouching next to Ayla, and nobody's really noticed. But I think that at this point, yeah, like now that I've remembered him, uh, <laughs> there is definitely a point where the prince kind of just looks down, furrows his, his brow, and then looks up. I'm afraid that we do not have any space remaining here at the palace. The guest room I've given to Lucius is my private guest chambers. Um, there are many fine hotels and uh, cuisineries in the city. Um, the, I will have a royal mage uh, provide you all with a mark of entry. And then I must ask you to return uh, as soon as possible. Um, if you have any requirements, if you, have any assist if you need any assistance within the city. Um, Mr. Majesty? Yes. I have two requirements. Um, first of all, is it okay if I stay with Lucius? I mean, I'm just worried, A, about him, and B, about other people warrant, like, stabbing him. He holds um, up a hand, like, please, I can assure you of Lucius' safety here. My personal royal guards will monitor it. Would I presume to think that if you were to, to refuse my said offer, you would be implying that my personal guards would not be up to the task? I just don't think they could probably provide emotional support. I'm not sure that... I'm not sure that Lucius is in need for any support right now, but perhaps when he's had a bit of time to process this, that would be best. Um, I'm question. afraid that I cannot allow you to go to the guest chambers. I would ask that you stay elsewhere in the city, return tomorrow. And if Lucius feels better, I, will, I can send him to find you. I can have someone bring you here. Bear, question two. Yes. Uh, one of our companions and Lucius's companion uh, mm. fell in battle uh, when we were fighting our way. He looks genuinely very hands. saddened by that. Um, and we were actually coming here to get help to resurrect our friend. Um, now, resurrection is no easy feat. Um, and it is not very common in Gusthaven. Our, generally when our dead die, we burn them and then scatter them to the winds, as has been our tradition with many people. Mm -hmm. Will is important. That said, obviously I know you are not from Gusthaven. There is a high priestess. <laughs> yeah, we'll resurrect him. <laughs> <laughs> Boom over the side. <laughs> Now you are fired. Just kick his beak off the side. <laughs> I, I would recommend you speak with the light seer at the Temple of Siaska. The, the Star Sorrow Cathedral. It'd be so delicious. It's not far from here. We can take Quill and see if we can get him. Burn him. <laughs> Burn to a crisp. <laughs> Um, on the wind. <laughs> Why did you think that they would just inflict their funeral rites on some random bird? <laughs> oh, that was dead. That was, that was it. <laughs> That's a dead bird. <laughs> yeah, we can't do that. The guard's we standing outside yeah. the, my room right now, or Quill's room, like looks in, like, oh, oh this one must have flown into a window. <laughs> Like no nice aracocra, <laughs> like, that's not unusual. Got a fresh one, boys. <laughs> Make a nice headdress. <laughs> back on the menu. <laughs> what about his legs? He doesn't need them. My precious sky city. It's a bit beyond. <laughs> a bit manky. <laughs> oh, please what was me. the name of the cathedral? But it's called Star Sorrow Cathedral. Oh, I wrote Starborn. <laughs> It's not far. It's close. No. Starmorn. Star Sorrow Cathedral. It is named after my royal line. But that is, it houses the Temple of Siaska and the, the Grand Lights here there. I'm sure she would, if she is able to help, which I'm sure she will have some capacity to do so. But as I understand it, uh, such feats, such miracles, they're rare. And if she does have the capacity to do so, I imagine it will require considerable resources. Well, that's why we were coming back here to get help from Lucius's father. Well, it was Lucius's main goal to bring him back. Well, I can promise you that I will make sure that compensation is paid, paid to Lord Enanasto. I cannot reclaim the business assets. They've long since passed into other hands and they're bound by law now. But I can make sure that those businesses pay a uh, reward. I believe that, and I will need to check the numbers for this, but a sum of around twenty to 30,000 gold. <laughs> that could work. Is that all? 
Um, what? <laughs> Daddy's been gambling. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> With that, uh, I would... Uh, I know that it is unlikely and perhaps not applicable as much, but I do hope that you will enjoy your stay in Gusthaven. Um, I do assure you it is a safe place. Uh, your weapons will need to be bonded. Uh, we have a rule against carrying open arms uh, here in the city. Um, uh, I mean, if there is a bounty, so to speak, on Lucius, potentially, we might be the targets as well. We also did literally arrive to a confrontation with some bad people. Yes. Kind of don't want to not have a hammer in my hands, going to be honest. You're, you're allowed to carry small arms and you are allowed to carry the hammer. It must simply be bonded. So it means that not... If you break that bond, if you draw your weapon to commit a crime, we will know. And what if we break the bond to uh, defend ourselves? Then that would be involved in the investigation and you will have your opportunity to say as much to a stave. Okay. Sounds fair. These are the laws of my city, I'm afraid. It makes sense. You are welcome here and I'm sure that you will find very little trouble. And then he calls over a royal stave. Um, and kind of bids you all farewell, and then makes his way off. And kind of, a very kind of, doesn't really say anything, he's just kind of like, yeah, I've brought over my man to do a thing. I'm a, I'm a king, I'm going now. Do, 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 <laughs> and then leaves. Um, unless you resist otherwise, the, the royal mage basically asks each of you to hold out the palm of your hand, and then a unique rune is carved, and it changes very slightly. There's a number of scro uh, strokes, and the position and, and orientation of each one is, is unique. Um, and once it is kind of like cast on your hand, it fades. What? You said scrotes. Yeah, you said scrotes. <laughs> scrotes. You yeah. said, oh, just you before said strokes, you said scrotes. So I, I meant to say like scrapes and strokes. <laughs> I can't remember because we're having to carve some scrotes in our hands. How are you guys not used to this already? Thanks. How are you not like, used to it already? I wish we had a big old scrote. I suppose you're, you've not had a true markism yet, have you? So okay. there you go. Yeah, that was a pretty snake. good one. You know, that thing was old campaign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just smokes and I was like, it's just like she knows. <laughs> The magical mark is placed on your palms. Um, it is unique, <laughs> and once it goes, it fades. Um, oh, and then dear. each of your weapons. So if you have any weapons that are a dagger in size, those are not bonded. You're basically allowed to carry a personal like, arm, like a club or a dagger, um, you know, a cane. Basically a cane or a knife you're allowed to carry. Okay. Anything you... else, uh, like your battle axe, Howling Tempest. Chiangong. What's Tiangong's in a full longsword. longsword at the moment? Does he notice my fire cannon arm? I don't think that they would know <laughs> what that is to bond it. Nice. Um, but basically what they do is a, a small ribbon with a kind of silver wax seal is placed around the weapon and like wherever you've got it attached, like a belt or on your back in a harness or whatever, it's attached to that and then bound so that if you pull the weapon free, it will break the seal basically. Oh, cool. Um, Void if removed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically, it's cool, it's, it's a peace bonding, it's basically each of your weapons. For Piri, they're just like, oh, you don't have any weapons, fine, yep. you're fine. Like this too Can't much. bond fucking A and fucking B. <laughs> <laughs> Benefits of being a monk, man. Um, and yeah, so... my pockets. Uh, <laughs> Nova, you would probably know that these, whatever these seals are, there is a minor enchantment on them. Okay. So if it's broken, you kind of have a suspicion of you probably can't just like put glue it, it back glue it back together. <laughs> and be like, oh no, we never took our weapons out. Me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, you don't know how it would work. There might be a way of fooling it, but Ooh. there is some. There is something there. Um, well, I've got detect magic. With that. I'm assuming that at some point you'll just detect magic and figure that out. Okay. Um, but that doesn't tell you how it works. Okay. It just says it is a magical thing. What did, would dispel magic? Maybe. Maybe. But then it wouldn't have any magic on it. So. Yeah. Volunteers tribute. You, you can figure that out later. <laughs> um, and you guys are all basically escorted out of the palace and down back into the city proper. I got um, bird. You can carry, yeah, you can yes. just go and pick up Burnt. He's not going to burn, he's fine. I <laughs> uh, can take him. Um, Lucius, for whenever Lucius, is, Lucius wakes up, when he wakes up there is a letter, in a, well, a sealed scroll case, and it's an Elanasto family, it's like a, you know, from your house, your family scroll case, from the desk of your father, and it's uh, left on the bedside table for when Lucius wakes up. Okay. Oh, how can you not want to just... Read it. Lucius wouldn't. So I'm not. Can't read. Okay. 
Not right now. Okay. <laughs> you just can't read. Um, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and I guess, <laughs> so at this point, <laughs> the, the new question becomes, um, what's everyone doing? Mainly, what's Lucius doing? Because I don't want Trot to just sit there doing nothing, but I feel like the guard would basically, you would have a guard post outside that room to protect you, but they would just let you, you know, have time. They, they wouldn't come and pester you. I'd probably sit and stare at this for a long time, mm -hmm. and then the cogs start churning eventually once it's like the fog is lifted, mm -hmm. and then it's going to anger immediately. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it can't be right. It's like denial phase. Yeah. It's like there's something... Something's going on. Something's wrong. Something's not right. He wouldn't be that careless. They're alive somewhere. Something's happened. Okay. And then I'm going to like, it will get to the point where it's like, I need to know what this is. So. Okay. Okay. This is a long one, Mark! <laughs> <laughs> it's longer than your advert. <laughs> it's almost like it's like their dad's last words. <laughs> oh. You can carry on if you want. Yeah. Um, the rest of you, are you going to basically head towards this cathedral then? Yeah. That's your yeah. plan? Yeah. It's not, it's, it's very, it's not very far. You actually head back it's... into the noble district where you came from, where the Ananasto estate is, <laughs> and oh. You can see that at the far edge of this district, on the very edge of the island, the literal island that's been lifted up into the air, and you can see this expansive blue nothing ahead of you. Um, the island, uh, it does have walls to prevent people just walking off the side. It has walls around it. But a bridge has been constructed between this island and another one which is floating alongside it. Oh, nice. And this bridge is connected, and on the other side, is a lake oh, pulled up out of the ground cool. and magically kind of sustained oh, is this cool. sky lake that's been connected to it. But just before that bridge that leads to the sky lake is one of the most beautiful buildings you have ever seen. Mm. Made, its roof is made from pure crystal. Jeez. Oh, and it's shaped up into the point of a star. The building itself is constructed with that same iridescent stone as the palace is with these kind of stained glass windows depicting Siaska um, beautifully rendered. Um, there is ornate marble fountains bubbling with a kind of crystal clear, sparkling water. Um, and you begin making your way through into these beautiful lush gardens, these kind of peace gardens with stones and gravels, the occasional kind of sculptures. Um, and you make your way through there. There is a service and you can hear a choir, this angelic, heavenly elven chorus, all being sung in elven. Um, that kind of descends out of the main doors. Um, and you can see that many, many citizens of Gusthaven of all different classes, you know, workers, nobles, all kinds, are participating and they're singing along softly as this choir kind of echoes down this beautiful chamber. When you look up, expecting to see the crystalline ceiling, what you actually see is a, almost like a planetarium version of the cosmos. <gasps> And you can see that the various stars twinkle and descend starlight down onto everybody else. Sorry, was this Star Star Cathedral? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, and you see that part of the illusion, this cosmos like illusion, um, Eros is at its center, and you can see uh, Palador like a figure, like a blazing figure, kind of circling it, providing light and warmth, and kind of holding her hands over it protectively is this illusion of the goddess herself. This kind of almost like black but made from stars, almost like space skin, with this long flowing celestial hair of white and gold and silver kind of billowing out, um, and her hands just placed protectively around the planet. And at the head leading this choir, you can see this elderly half-elven woman. She wears very simple, plain white robes, uh, similar to Siaska's, this kind of very kind of Greek toga-style robes. She has a delicate silver circlet around her head. She must be in like her 60s or 70s, but because she's a half-elf, she's still kind of vigorous, um, and she still kind of looks quite good for her age. Hmm. Her gray hair pulled up high, and she's leading this choir. And then when it calms down, she's like, I wish to thank you all once again for coming to our service. Um, please, may the light of the Star Mother carry with you always. And then people begin shuffling out as they make their way out. Um, and people cast strange glances over towards you because you're carrying a dead Arakokra <coughs> and there's a goblin kind of hanging off your legs. 
like literally like arms like he's like you've been having to like carry him almost like I probably would have like, just put him, him on my shoulder at you some point him, if you pick him up he's like yeah he's like holding onto your head like a child like ah <laughs> and just like looking around and he's like pointing up at the illusion he's like trying to grab stuff he's like and he puts his hands oh no he reminds me of do you remember Donnie from Wild Fall Breeze? Oh, oh, yes! I based him on Donnie. Yes! <laughs> oh, that makes sense. And uh, yeah, he's just kind of cackling away. I guess like to the people that are walking past and glancing They're just us. like, what the fuck? But they're like, oh, and they're like, they like nod their head politely. Hey, praise the Asker. And praise, I'm praise just, the star mother to I'm you as well. I'm staring at the ceiling and I'm just talking about like all the constellations and what that means and what that means and what that one's called and what that star's called and what that star's called. And I don't even care who's listening. I'm just like... You're just babbling away. <laughs> and then I'm... <laughs> Definitely not listening at this point. <laughs> just trying to keep Smeek quiet. <laughs> Smeek, Smeek will be quiet, but he's like, look, he's like listening to Nova. Like he's like looking at her. That's he doesn't understand that's what Nova's fine. saying, but Nova's being excited about <laughs> something, and Nova's, he assumes that that's Adora important. Warms the <laughs> Nova's basically being Smeek, but is talking yeah. in common. Yeah, he's just like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the constellation of this, which is based on this. And the, 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 the. the constellations are probably all based on the the children of Siaska, yeah. like Atelicus, Esper. Oh, like they're all sweet. named after the gods. And now I know how old they all are. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Um, and as you begin filtering out, you can see that the uh, the elderly, the light seer, turns their attention to several other attendants, and they begin cleaning up and just you know doing things that religious people do after a sermon. Um, but they do notice you, and she kind of cocks her head a little bit. And one of the attendants comes up and is like, "Oh, greetings, travelers. Can we help you?" Uh, yeah. Well, you come for funeral rites? Looking over at the guardian carrying the body, <laughs> like the clearly like wrapped up, like Scaldi's <laughs> wrapped quill all up, so he looks like a dead body. <laughs> no, not quite a funeral actually. Uh, kind of hoping for for the opposite. The opposite. A birth. <laughs> <laughs> a rebirth. Oh, oh, oh. We want the, we want the bird back. Um. Well, I'll, uh, hang on a moment, please. And this this elven man kind of trots along, like lifts up his little priestly robes and kind of scurries along the the ground towards uh, the elderly lady. He begins whispering it to her, and she kind of like looks, and then she just does this towards all of you, like waves you down. Really, that easy? All right. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll wander down. And watch as she kind of places her hands together, whispers. When you get close to her, can everybody make a wisdom saving throw, please? Oh, this one. That's my worst one. <laughs> Three. Natural one. <laughs> okay, three, three. Oh, 16. 16. Sixteen. Sixteen. Mine's four. Eighteen. Eighteen. So, Nova and Sentry. I'll make one for Smeek. Fails. His head explodes. <laughs> um, Sentry and Nova, you can you can lie if you want to. Oh. Puri and Ayla, got to tell the truth. Oh, Ayla? <laughs> like she does anyway. I know, but <laughs> no that's the effect of whatsoever. Well. Technically, Smeek must also speak the truth. But nobody can understand her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as you as you uh, as you approach, she kind of this elderly lady smiles uh, and looks around. And is like, well, I'm told that you are looking for something of a rebirth. Yes, please. Our friend fell in combat, and we would like to very much bring him back. And who are you, Guardian? I'm Sentry from Solvin. Hmm. And what of the rest of you? If you are asking for a rebirth of your companion, I would at least like to know who you are. Oh, I'm Periodara. I'm a uh, Fyganassi, <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> I can. Yes, I can indeed. Yeah. And you, my dear? Ayla. Ayla, and this one? Oh. Meek! <laughs> oh, he did it! <laughs> wow, it's the first time name. I think I've heard him say his own name. And why, why is this goblin with you? He was a stowaway. We didn't really want to bring him, but he tagged along. And you're just carrying him around now. It's for the best, honestly. They're best friends. We're not best friends. All right. Are you telling the truth? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of you, Eganessi? I'm Nova, and this place is amazing. Thank you very much. It was the work of um, one of our one of our Sky Princes in the past. That's so beautiful. Very devout to Siaska and wanted to have a, a proper shrine to her. May I ask how your friend died? Please. This is beyond me. We were fighting a person. 
And what she, person? I don't know her name. Why, why were you fighting her? Because she was hurting us. How did you come into conflict with her? Like, what led to this battle? Who were we? I'm genuinely like, Katie is like trying to think of where we were. <laughs> so, I can't Katie, so, Ayla is going, Where were we? Oh, uh, we were on the continent of Voxar and we were in this keep of the night eyes. And I'm like, Night oh, eye. Look at that. What and that? Um, yeah, she was like a servant of Hadar and she was like doing some weird stuff in there. I think she was trying to raise the dead or something like that or get a foothold for Hadar in this world. Look at that constellation there! <laughs> Um, but yeah, she like really got into Quill and killed him. And could you bring him back, please? We have money. Did you defeat this woman? Yes. Hmm. Where were you before? When? So have you known this Quill? Did you say? Yes. Have you known him long? Oh uh, man. Yeah. You know him a bit longer though, Sentry. All right. Yeah. You've known him for some time, Guardian. And you said you're from Solvin. Yeah. I mean, we've all heard stories of the legendary cities. It's rare to meet guardians from there, though. All right. This is on you. You must understand that to have a, a group of strangers coming and requesting a resurrection, it is uncommon. We are well aware, but we've come here because... Can I ask you something? Of all the people in the world who die, there are people that die every day. Why does this Arrow Croker deserve to live? I mean, obviously I understand you care for him. That That is noble of you. But everyone cares for the people that die. Well, this he, is a rare gift that can be provided, and I'm not sure if I even can. He speaks to Hesper. He's Hesper a, seems to think that he is... He's a champion. ...some kind of champion, and that he has some great cause that he should be around for. Mm. That's a very good reason. I did it. I good. can help. I can help. But... That was Quill from the, from the grave, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> I would ask you not to celebrate too soon, because this is no easy task. If I am to perform this ritual, I can, I can perform this ritual only a few times a year. It is only granted to me a small amount of power to do so. And to perform it requires unique components. There are two options. I require either a diamond of no imperfections, the, a pure diamond, of which they are very few, very rare and very few, and they are very expensive. The other option is a, a rod made of ethereum and platinum, solid ethereum and platinum, an alloy. Again, very expensive, very rare. These are required because you must understand how death works. When we die, if, whether we are noble souls or not, Kilara takes us to a, a new place. For noble souls, we are taken beyond the cradle into the afterlife, into Siaska's embrace. A place of peace and comfort. If we are not noble souls, we are taken elsewhere, to a place called Limbo. You do not want to end up there. To call your friend's soul back, from what I hope, the Siaska's embrace, I need to channel his soul back into his body. And that is not a case of simply calling down a spirit and laying it next to him. It must be channeled into his very essence. And to do that requires something to focus it. Hence the need for the diamond or the rod. Both of these things can channel the essence of a soul back into a living body, into an unliving body. And if we have that material, do you have the power to do that now? Yes. It will be, I can only perform it twice uh, this year, and I have already used one of my, um, one of these uses many, many months ago. But I still have one remaining. Well, I think we're in good hands. You've done it before. I can offer you a little advice. I know that there are Ethereum refineries here on Gusthaven who can likely supply platinum and ethereum, but you are likely looking at something around 8,000 gold for the raw material. Oh, yeah? Nice. Um, <laughs> well, um, isn't that a diamond cheaper? The pure diamond is, it will be less money, but it is rarer to find. You would, perhaps one of the noble houses of Gusthaven might have something that they could sell. Places like 
if you are able to travel, the dwarven city of Goldthrone is known for its miners. Damn it! <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Just stab that knife in. Uh, How many charges have your watch got? <laughs> Uh, Road trip. He can't. He can't go to Gusthaven. No. Yep. He doesn't have Gusthaven as a location. Goldthrone. Goldthrone. Yeah. Goldhaven. What's that? Mm. Uh, Gusthaven and Goldthrone, I guess. Um, the the diamond perhaps would be around five thousand if you were to buy it from someone. And uh, after we got the material, yes. Anything else we might no. need? No, 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 no. If you, if what you say, I. Must admit that there is some enchantment involved, but I believe your elven friend when she says that your companion is a champion of Hesper. I and genuinely if... could not be bothered to lie. <laughs> it's understandable. Also, I magically compelled you to do so. Cool. Uh, but if that is true, then your friend has a greater purpose, and it is my duty as a servant of Siaska to ensure that her children's purposes are met. And so I must, I must help you bring this, this person back. But I'm afraid that I do not have the wealth or the means to do so. Leave it with us. Very well. What have we got? You are welcome to leave your friend's body here. I do not recommend carting a body around Gusthaven. I think that would be for the best. I think it would be better care here. (laughs) In the burn pile. (laughs) Burn him. Ah, shit. (laughs) Not that one. (laughs) Hey, we came back, we got got the diamond. <laughs> Deep fat fry, just, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> So we're gonna take a break, it's but before we do that, are you gonna leave Quill's body here? Uh, yeah. As long as he's safe. Sure as it's long right as safe. What do you want to do next? I guess we're finding the material. So yeah. how do you want to do that? We're probably gonna have to find the Ethereum, right? I feel uh, like the we Ethereum for one. We have three thousand six hundred and fifty gold. Lucius has Ethereum. Oh wait, hold on a minute. Yeah, he has, and I have. I have an Ethereum. I have an Ethereum alloy dagger. Yeah. And an Ethereum command. Shave like three hundred GP. And an um, Ethereum little helps. Uh, It's not Ethereum. It's not made from Ethereum. It has Ethereum in it, but it's a small amount. Impure. Yeah. Should we? I think we should talk to someone before. Should we wait for Lucius to be? Yeah. Yeah. We'll chat chat to Lucius. No, I'm not even thinking of money. I just think that Lucius should probably be here. He wants. Yeah. He was like the one who wanted to get pulled back the most. And he's in the Ethereum business. Um, And he's in the Ethereum business. Okay. But also. So with that, you guys leave uh, Kor's body, and as you begin making your way out, you just hear. As you're making your way out, a voice sounds out, crisp and clear. Speak! And then one's like, bastard. Cake time! Cake, Cake time! Cake time.
Has everyone got their mics on? Yes. <gasps> yeah! Yeah. yeah! We did it! Hello nice. everyone. Welcome back. We had some cake to celebrate doing a roast celebrate. for one year. One whole year. Oh, yeah. Varroa's whole action. Entire Before we get back into the action, don't forget. Yeah. Also yeah. hit Tom in the face with the box. Yeah, he tried to throw it past my head. Nailed me. <laughs> right in the face. Yeah. It was perfect. Yep, great. Thank you. Left the mark too. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, right after this episode of Aurorus, go over to twitch.tv forward slash D&D, because we're going to be streaming another two hours of Dungeons & Dragons yeah. in Lightfall's Descent. You can act, act happy about it, all right? Yeah! Oh my god! We're playing some D&D. &D. <laughs> it's not a chore. I love it! We're playing some D&D, &D. we're going back to Lightfall characters, they're in hell, it's going to be a great time, twitch.tv forward slash D&D, right after this. We're right! right um, L right now. Lucius. Mm. He's a hell. Mm. <laughs> Sad face. Sad face. Sad. You probably have a couple of hours of, of you know, <clears throat> dealing with things. Quiet content. But then you read the letter. Um, and inside is the certificate. Is the, is the, is like a mark of credit as well. Also, <laughs> it's some money. After all that. But it's, it's, and what I'm saying is, is it's not just the letter. Inside is the, the, the mark of credit he mentioned as well. Okay. Um, what would you like to do? Is, or would you just do you want to do anything, or not? Uh, I'm going to pocket that letter. Mm -hmm. I won't burn it. We love burning things in Gusthaven. Birds. And I'm just going to be pacing the room a lot. Okay. Probably to see the annoyance of the guards. Like I'm thinking to myself, I'm not I mean, saying anything out loud. It's very cushioned. It's very carpeted. It's probably not making a lot of noise. Okay. Really go and you could like smash stop. stuff around, but if you're just not pacing, it probably won't make. Yeah. I'm trying to piece things together. Okay. So you're just. Thinking. I'm doing CSI in my brain, but it's a Lucius doing it, so... Okay, it's like a big colourful children's painting. Yeah, yeah. He sees a cow walking into the El Anasto estate. <laughs> Murder Pink pieces of string across the board, but then he just tangles himself up in it instead. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually I come to a conclusion where I'm saying, Nanny out loud. Mm -hmm. going, yes. I need to find out. Okay. Gods! Uh, you hear like a kind of shuffling, like a clanking of metal, the door opens. Uh, it is a young half-elf, uh, not half-elf, uh, high-elf, um, opens it up, kind of peers through. Uh, yes, Lord Anaste? Am I permitted to leave? Of course you are, you're, you're here as Thank a guest. Thank you, I'm oh. past. <laughs> um, can I, he kind of like trots after you like, but I, I would like to ask where you're going, sir, just in case the prince asks. To my friends. Uh, okay, do you wish, do you want where to start finding them? Uh, we believe that they were headed to the Star Sorrow Cathedral. Right, thank you. With your, your, the Arakokra that, that, that they brought in with them? Right, yes, yes, thank you. Are, are you sure you're alright, Lord? Yes, I'm, I'm happy fine. to accompany you. you. Alright. Uh, and he'll kind of stand back and watch as you leave, and then he trots off to go find somebody to report to. I'll turn around mm -hmm. right at the end. I love the cushioning effect of the floor. <laughs> you call down the corridor? It's so good to be home. And then walk on. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And uh, you make your way out. Are you going to try and find the, the rest of them? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as you guys begin leaving, because I think by the time you guys got there and had the conversation with the, the lights here, you know, Lucius has had enough time to kind of like think and, and figure things out. Um, and yeah, you, you probably see in the distance emerging from the cathedral. No quill, um, but you see the rest of them emerging from the cathedral. And you all see... You know, stood at the end of a plaza, kind of like staring up at the cathedral, looking to what your direction you see, Lucius. Uh, that was quick. Um, I'm just going to over for it. Lucius, are you okay? Are you okay? Do you need more hankies? No, but I could do with your help. I can do that? What do you need? I think uh, something is afoot. Something is amiss. Oh yeah, for sure. This place stinks right now. Something big's going down. Yeah, I don't yeah. really believe a lot of what we were told. I don't think any of them are dead. Oh. Speak. Speak. It's impossible. I don't want to talk about this in public. Are you in danger? Well, potentially. People thought... don't know he's here yet, so we, we should probably get him yeah. inside. We yeah. think he might be in danger. Right. So somewhere quiet, somewhere private. Ask him about it. Well, the cathedral is protected, it's warded and guarded at all times. We could ask if we can go back in, I guess. I could always ask uh, the prince, but I don't think there's quarters for all of you. Yeah, he pretty much told us to get out earlier. Yeah. I think we're going to have to find somewhere to stay. Do you know of any good places that don't cost everything? Because it turns out we need that for Quill. I only had to stay in one place. So I don't really know 
Any, anytime someone visited, did they stay somewhere in particular? It was always handled. Okay. C could we not just go by the lake? I mean, there doesn't seem like there's many people there. Oh, the, the sky. I should show you the, the sky lake at some point. It's beautiful. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yes, let's go there. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you guys can just travel down there. It's open. It's it's um, as you begin making your way. The the first thing you notice is you have to walk along this bridge that is a series of very delicate kind of metal chains and things connected to it, and it's anchored into one island and anchored into the other, and there is a kind of shifting motion to it, cool. and you are just looking down thousands and thousands of feet as the world is moving below you, and. People just cross it without Fuck thinking. That <laughs> shit. <laughs> We're going somewhere else. No. Well, this is. This is so. I'm cool. in complete denial. Mm -hmm. And this is a total like 180 mm -hmm. to deal. So this is one of the most spectacular sights of Gusthaven. You can't miss it. I can see it from here. When Hesper raised all the sky cities, this little island came with Gusthaven. I'll, if I hold you, With you hold waterfall. me, and then we'll walk across carefully, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, but the down. last time that I was in the sky like this, we crashed out of it. I know, but we can be careful. I want, I want to see, but I'm scared. Please. There's not been a single fatality on this bridge. I'm, 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 I'm just like a little bit away, and I'm bouncing up and down. I go, guys, this is really safe. Look. <laughs> like, yeah, you just, it's like, it's, it's you know, it's, it's kind of like a, you know, like a rope bridge, but it feels very secure. Um, and there is like people kind of watching you strangely and you do see a couple of the high elves are kind of like, they kind of like roll their eyes and shake their head a little bit like, oh, these idiots, like these idiot lowlanders, they kind of, ugh. Um, but one of them kind of calls out is just like, just so you know, it, it is completely safe. There's enchantments in case you fall over. And it yes. slows your descent. Try it, it's Wait, quite fun. Slows your descent? Oh. Yeah. I'll hold you, I'll hold you. Well, so you, you just land me? down there in like a day? Yeah. Oh, it takes time, so we, there's normally, if they detect someone yeah. falling off, the guards yeah. will send a Pegasus uh, to come and catch you. We can do it, we can do it, we can do it. Honestly, I just want to see that now. Can I throw someone uh, at the end? Uh, please do not waste the guards' time. Uh, nah. good, good day, Lowlanders. Uh, and he kind of nods more to Lucius in a kind of, we're citizens of this place. <laughs> like, um, well. These Lowlanders. <laughs> um, come on, let's waste no time. We okay. have to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, 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 sure. That's first priority, I guess. Just, just tunnel vision. Okay. Smeek, go. He like hops off your head, looks down, pats it with his bare goblin feet. <laughs> and he just starts running across it, like jumping up and down. He goes up to the chain bars, <laughs> <laughs> like peers over it. <laughs> I bet he spits as well. No, he doesn't spit. Over the side. No, he spits yeah. over the side. No, he no. spits over the side. Yeah. I love his enthusiasm no. for everything. He's just like bouncing up and down. Um, licks, probably licks it at some point. He's like, eh, eh. Stop <laughs> putting things in your mouth. Let's ah. go. Yeah. And blinkers. Let's okay. Go. Yeah. You guys, you make come <laughs> across, and it's, it's like walking across a long, you know, ever so slightly swaying bridge. But you do so. At one point, this thick roll of clouds passes over the bridge and kind of covers your feet. And there's this, and then it passes. Mm. It, it passes very quickly. Mike, can I just say this is cool? It's cool. Yeah. Like, cool visual, this is cool. Final Fantasy level shit, yeah. and I am here for it. When you, <laughs> when you reach the other side, you can see that the area of the Sky Lake is a lot, it's a large lake. And there are like grassy patches and little hills around it as well. There is another kind of like stone. Uh, stone wall that's been built around to stop people just walking off the side. Um, but you can see it's clearly a touristy spot. There are little vendors, there are little like refreshment stands, there are people actually out in the lake on like little boats Aww. kind of sailing around. There's like trees and little gardens and like little hedge mazes and Wasn't it's like a very quaint little tourist spot. Yeah. But the, the lake is also, there are dozens of fishing spots and you can see that there are a lot of fishermen and they appear to be working. They're, it's not like a recreational fishing. They are working to fish. The, um, it's the bottom of the lake. <coughs> like that's all in, encased as well. Yeah. It's not like the bottom of it is like straight down. Straight no, down. no, it's, it's oh, encased. Cool. Okay. Um, so it's encased. You also, yeah. those of you who are more perceptive, so anybody who's kind of got like passive perception over 14 or so. Nope. No. Um, I think it's just Ayla and I think Lucius, who Lucius would know this anyway. Um, you do Very spot that on the, perception. Kind of patrolling, you don't see city watch, but there are a number of dwarven druids 
Um, and they are all clearly, they have strange amulets. And they're just walking around and they'll occasionally walk up to the lake. They kind of look down at it, gesture with a spell, mm. nod. Um, one of them walks over to one of the fishermen as he's pulling up a fish and he just pats him on the shoulder. They have some sort of exchange and then the fisherman is like, mm, and he packs up his stuff and leaves. And then the druid begins casting some sort of spell over the lake. Chlorine. Bleach. Okay. But yeah, and, and it's very pleasant. It's uh, very pleasantly warm as it always is in Gusthaven. Um, and you can see that people are just going about you know, enjoying a lovely day on the side of a lake. Can we find a quiet spot? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I was going to say that. So it's a, uh, yes, I know, a perfect spot. Yeah, sure. Follow me. Yeah. Lucius leads you to... And I'm, I'm walking at pace with determination. Lucius, are you okay? You're more decisive than I've ever seen you. Well, considering the circumstance, I think I have to be. Okay. I just want to check that you're okay. Yes, I'm okay. Yes. Okay. Anyway, I guess, assume we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, 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 what does it look like? Wait, where is it? Like a little. I guess it's kind of near the the manufactured rock <laughs> wall. There's like an area that's kind of shadowed. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like it's like a small copse of trees. Yeah. That kind of protects it, blocking the mm -hmm. uh, the view from mm -hmm. the touristy area. It's like little picnic tables, but nobody's around. So, my family aren't dead. Let's be honest, they're too clever for that. So there's got to be something else going on. It can't just be an accident. My father and my mother do not do that sort of thing. Okay, okay. Um, what gives you that idea? Do you know your parents? Yeah. Then you know what they're capable of and what could happen to them. You can assume things from that, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm doing. And you're assuming they... Things don't add up, is what I'm saying. Well, we... Well, we know that. Yeah. We don't think it was an accident, but that... Good. Doesn't then mean... Then you're right. That doesn't mean that they might not be dead, Lucius. I just want to prepare you for that possibility that they are, but it wasn't an accident. This is what we're trying to find out. Yes, and we'll get to the bottom of that. However, I think the starting point is to go to my nanny, nor fear. No, right. And she wasn't in the house when it blew up? Again, like with this sort of circumstance, she wouldn't put herself in that sort of danger. If something was brewing, she'd know about it. Lucius, do you have any evidence? Like, do you... I mean, the prince mentioned there was a letter for a scroll for you or something? Yeah, that, that's no matter. But what I'm trying to get at is Nanny Norfia is a survivor from the Lowlands. And she's told me wondrous adventures of what she's been through. And she's a refugee into Gusthaven, and she would know how to deal with this scenario and would know where my family is. Did she live outside of your family's estate? No, she lived in and raised, helped raise me. How often was she ever not in the Elanesto estate? Well, she, she was my main protector and guardian for when my family were busy okay. with their business, which is often the case, and she taught me everything I know. But what I mean is, is it irregular for her not to be there? Yes, but the circumstance of my entire estate blowing up is quite irregular, don't you think? Well, no, that's what I mean. If it's irregular that she's not there, and she just happens to not be there when the place... What are you implying? I'm implying that you might actually be onto something. In regards to my nanny? Yeah, if she's not there, then not maybe she, she was sent it. away, is what I'm saying. No, she would have known. She wouldn't be sent away. For her she protection, I mean. She doesn't need it. Right. I'm on your side, Lucius. Mm. Good. Where else would she be if she wasn't there? Where can we look for her? Well, she's very secretive and very cunning, so I assume she kept some things secret from me. Um, would I know anywhere that she would? I don't think, I don't think you're in your life, she was always in the Alanasto estate, and as long as you needed her, she was there. I mean, I don't think you would know what she would have done with any of her free time. Yeah. I don't think she would have ever told you. I don't know, but uh, maybe if she knows that I'm alive, she'd find me. Nobody currently knows that you're alive. So we need to get word out that... I don't think that's for the best yet. I think the, we should through the right channels. Well, we well don't currently, we right exactly. I know who we can Oh, trust. we met this guy. Bellinor. Him. What's your impression of Bellinor? The Groners. <laughs> oh, I love them. They're fantastic. Um, why? Right, um... You saw him? What did he say? Well, he said he was relieved, he was angry, uh, but relieved. Angry. 
He said relieved anyway. He was quite aggressive. He's confused. He yeah. said he was your friend and not your friend that you used to sky jazz together and you grew up together or something? He said you grew up together, you used to play together, but you're not necessarily friends, play. but you <laughs> know each other. He called it play, did he? He said he uh, wasn't the nicest uh, when you were younger. <laughs> when I was younger? Mm. How about ever since I've known him to this day? Okay. He's never been nice and playful, exactly. Like a bully is to their victim. <laughs> we got that impression, I think. Yeah. And his family are the ones that hired the scryer to, to scry on you and reported your death. I think he genuinely doesn't know what's going on. Not to put the wrong ideas into your head. Like, don't just the target did this. No, 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 no. He no. Doesn't don't target know. one. It all makes sense. No, he doesn't know what's going on. Lucius. They planned Lucius. this. Lucius. His and then they scribed and assumed so. I was dead. Yes, you're right. You're right. The Magronas did this. No, but and Bellinor's at the top of it. No, I don't think he's he is. not. He would be he working for know. his mother. And what do his... you know? What do you both know? We know as much, if well, probably less than you do. But exactly, we also have to see reason a little bit, Lucius. We spoke to him. He genuinely didn't seem like he knew what his mother was doing. But. He He's didn't seem very nice, gonna be honest, bit of a dick. But I don't think that he's involved. I think that his mother is definitely involved. Our assumptions have led us down the wrong path before. I think we shouldn't be so quick to judge someone from this a is, minute or two. Of this is why knowing. we don't want you to announce that you're here yet. Because when people know that, then you're in danger. Is there Do any you way see what we mean? I think that at the moment, it's beneficial that people don't know that you are still alive. Mm. I understand. And I said that we do it through the right channel, did I not? We don't know what those channels are yet. I do. Why don't you trust me? We I, do. I, I mean... I trust you. As Lord Alanasto, that we will afford Can we you. not? <laughs> Let's not use that. Thank you. But you can afford new access that you didn't have before. Maybe you can find your nanny some other way. If the Magronas know I'm here, I assume they're going to try and bury that. Well, Bellinor does, at least. That the whole family will know. Probably now. Can I make a suggestion, Lucius? Yes. I think you need more time before we start making any rash decisions, before we start digging into things maybe we shouldn't be digging into right now. I'm sorry, I think, Sentry, I, I very much value your opinion, but we don't have time, do we? Well, I, I understand that loss hurts and death hurts and... Well, we don't need to worry about those things, they're not dead. Well, we don't... But just, even just the loss, just not knowing where they are... Like, I, I, under, I understand how it feels, just... I think... You just need to take some time. We've just got here, and this is all. And I've got a here lot. too late. That's what's wrong. No. We... I think we need to pursue something immediately. Um, I, I, mm, before we do that, we, we, what about Quill? Um, Quill, yes. We just went to see the lights here, and she said she can. Smeek is like flapping his arms. Okay. And he's like, <laughs> ah! Quill! Mark has been silent for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> now he can jump in whenever he wants. Yeah. Smeek Sme was doing his own thing. But when he recognises when you say Quill, he's like, he's like, it's like he's trying to contribute to the conversation oh, of like... He's learning. Quill! She said that we either need a pure diamond or a rod of ethereum and platinum right. to bring him back. But we could do it today, but you know ethereum, right? Do you know where we could get that? Yes, yes, my family... Um make ethereum rods. Could we get one? I, yes. I, we might need to speak to the happened. prince about what's happened to those effects. Yes. The prince mentioned that your father's business had been sold on. Been sold? It had been liquidated and sold to various noble families. Who had control of that? They believed that you were dead, Lucius. Because there was no more Elanastos left. None? Not even my sister? 
He said that she was on the fire in a fire. How did she get away? The we... Sky Prince said that he will make attempts to try and return whatever he can to you um, for right. compensation. She would take control of the business after. Maybe she's lying low as well, yes. Probably something like that. Mm. Um, Probably the right, not the right time to attack. She's very cunning as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, how, slightly off topic, but how dangerous is it making Ethereum rods and infusing it with platinum? Dangerous? Mm. I can't say I've ever been in the workshop. It's quite dirty. Right. So I don't really know. I think that Lucius would know that, I mean, your business, was, your, your family were always known as just, they were kind of boring in the society, right? They, they made this really functional part, but it's not very exciting. It was it's intrinsic. Not very, it was but intrinsic, yeah. but it was very plain. It was, yeah. it was, you know, like manufacturing, like, you know, carbon rods. It's not like a, a fancy thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you've never known your father to work on anything dangerous. Your sister definitely was a bit more... I've never heard of any like workshop failures or like mass no, problems. Not whilst you were alive. Maybe like I mean even but then even when you were sent to find the prototype, which you still have, the, the prototype that your father sent for, that's the first time you've ever known him to branch out. Like it, you know, you know that your sister had been encouraging him to like try new avenues and things, but yeah, you'd never known of him to do anything dangerous. It's a very standard procedure, like um I assume like forging any other weapon. Okay but it's Ethereum, which is quite special. Mm. Um, should we talk to the prince about... I just wonder what we should do first. I, I feel like maybe we should focus on Quill first, and then... Yes, Quill is Also, Quill, is Quill might actually be able to help us. Yes, he can help me, so let's, let's help Quill first. Okay, so if we go to the prince and maybe ask for some... I think that's the most logical step, to ask him what's happened with your assets? Right, yes. I, I guess I can hold on to them until we find my family. Or I can make use of them at least. And that way we can get Quill back because if they're lying low, they're probably safe. Oh, it's heartbreaking! Okay. Is yep. this scroll so like that you had, is that anywhere, like, this is Kim asking, is it visible? Uh, I've typed it away in like a oh. satchel or something like that. Okay. So your plan is to head back to the palace? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You make your way back, traveling through the streets as normal. Um, things are, you know, passing into the afternoon now. You can see that, you know, various little coffee shops, people out there drinking and things like that. Make your way through. Um, you pass up into the guards. This time, however, the guards at the gate just before the palace do kind of stop you um, and inquire to your business. Uh, can we help you? Uh, yeah, we, um, we're here to speak to someone about the Alanasto estate. The Alanasto estate? Uh, uh, we'll send a messenger just to confirm. Who, can, who shall we say is asking? Lucius. Lucius? Alanasto. Oh, Alanasto. Mm, very well. You just get the impression these guards just don't, aren't savvy on politics necessarily. Um, they send somebody up. A short time later, a runner comes back. Uh, yes, uh, his Majesty has said that you're, you're to enter. Um, he can't speak to you himself, but he's uh, one of his staves will come and speak with you. Um, okay, is that uh, Elois? Yes, yes, he said that you, you would be familiar with Elois. Mm. Uh, and so you're escorted up to the palace. Um, you go through the main kind of uh, forum chamber uh, and up some stairs of a spiral staircase into a large office. Uh, very plush, large, thick carpets, bookshelves in a cur on a curved wall. There are various busts of high elven uh, princes and princesses that have ruled Gusthaven. And you see sat at the desk kind of reading a, a spell book and like kind of making notes in a spell book. The same elderly uh, robed elf that you spoke to before, Elois. I'm glad to see that you are feeling better, Lord Elanesto. Yes, his head. thank you. I am determined to get to the bottom of this. Oh, good. Um, I have some information regarding that myself. Um, but you, the guards mentioned that you wish to speak about something? Yes, to help us with our investigation, we brought a body here, I assume you saw. Mm. Our dear friend. Mm. Um, I need to access my family's business. Mm. Yes. 
<laughs> the His Majesty already spoke with your traveling companions, but I regret to inform you, Lord Lucius, that after when we believed that the Elanastro line was no more, the Elanastro Trading Company's assets and various facilities were sold off, um, as is tradition in the custom. Various businesses purchased uh, them from the city itself, uh, and they have now been absorbed and into their own requirements. The prince has basically told these businesses that due to uh, the fact that you are now alive, um, that compensation must be paid uh, for those assets that have already been distributed and taken. Uh, I believe that it will be to the sum of 30,000 gold. Who bought the Ethereum God Manufacturing Company? <coughs> well, in the, the various facilities, the equipment um, was purchased by multiple businesses. Uh, the various stocks of Ethereum also spread around. Several of your warehouses were bought. The, form, the formal list of those who bought various assets uh, includes Magrona Manufacturing, uh, Moonbright Wayfarers Travel, Etheron Refineries, and Cloud Garden Cargo and Collection. Hmm. For various businesses from around the city purchased. Uh, it was all sold in different amounts to various different companies, hence the reason that unfortunately we are not simply able to return it to you. Many of it has now been sold on across the several weeks to different uh, continents and cities and the like. The assets I'm owed? Yes. How do I obtain those? Uh, once we have collected it from those four businesses, which will take a few days, uh, we will deposit it into your account here at the Gusthaven Bank. It right. will be in the form of uh, pressed gold, pressed platinum, that sort of thing. And you are free to do with it as you wish. Thank you. Uh, in regards to the investigations, I spoke with Anastasia Magrona. Briefly, through a sending spell, so it was limited in communication, and speaking with her son, Belenor, they have claimed, they've given us the name of the stave who performed the scrying, and we are currently trying to track the individual down. It seems that they have gone missing from their residence. Anastasia simply gave us, she was very forthright, gave us the name of the stave, said that it was one that she had uh, commissioned several times before, um, and had trusted implicitly. Convenient scapegoat. Can I ask Possibly. why why was the scrying process handed to Magrone in the first place? It was at the time the royal staves were busy engaging. You may have noticed the network of spheres and rods above the city. Hmm. It functions to help maintain the weather here in Gusthaven. It also pro prote provides protection against um, storms and uh, uh, you know adverse weather. There are a number of malfunctions across the grid and most of the royal stairs were occupied with repairing it. It takes considerable magical skill. Uh, it was at this time that several of the families offered their own personal staves and Magrona Manufacturing and the Magrona family have always been loyal servants of, of, of the palace and so we entrusted them to provide it. Okay. Right. But I do understand your suspicions. I'm, I have been around a long time and whilst Gusthaven is free of much crime, I believe that there is a growing element. Not in the streets. The streets are very safe. But I have long advised Aradan that some of these businesses, especially the ones from other sky cities, Horizon and Cloud Garden in particular, they bring with them an element. I think that they may be paying off several of our other noble houses, perhaps even some of the royal staves or the royal wands themselves. I speak this to you in confidence because obviously this involves Lord Elanasto, but it lends itself to an investigation I have been investigating. Right. <laughs> an investigation I have been investigating. Oh, Mark. I don't think any of you have ever been to our formal meetings and gatherings, hmm? because you would have noticed that the Magronas and the Elanastos don't exactly get on very well. There are many rivalries amongst the royal, the noble families, Lord Elanasto. That is not uncommon, but it has always been kept, not civil as such, but within the confines of our society. I know that your father and Anastasia argued, but they also made many deals together. They worked together on many projects. 
many of your own Ethereum rods were reused in Magrona manufacturing. There's a reason that your families have been so close for many years, even if that closeness has sparked confrontations. And sparked this. We do not yet have evidence as such, and I am loath to make any judgments before I have clear evidence before me. We are trying to track down the stave in question now. Once we have them in custody, we will make sure we get the truth from them. I think it's important that you bring Anastasia in as well. She has been summoned by the Prince. She is returning to Gusthaven on the next available airship. What's the stave's name? For now, he kind of looks over. Forgive me, I understand that this is a very personal matter, but it is also a matter of an investigation, and I do not want personal ties to influence it too much. I am handling this investigation, as are many royal ones, and the prince is taking it extremely seriously. But this must be investigated by agents of law, not by foreign mercenaries, if I'm to be uncouth. I'm that is how you are seen. I'm a scholar, not a mercenary. Well, foreign scholars then, perhaps. I'm a foreign. But you are a member of the house involved. We cannot, for, as you said, you have your grievances with several family members, and until we have evidence to suggest they are guilty, we cannot lend itself to so. Do you have any witnesses of the event itself? The explosion? Yes. There were several, uh, mainly the servants of the nearby other families' houses, uh, but there was also one, one of your own household, a no fear. She was returning that night and saw the explosion from a distance. She saw it? She's alive? I believe so, yes. She Do you know injured. she is now? Uh, I believe recuperating in her uh, her residency. She has uh, she received compensation payment from the liquidated assets uh, and has been uh, uh, were living in the city uh, for the last few weeks. I told you she's a survivor. She knew. So we investigated her. She had been uh, meeting with a uh, a romantic friend uh, at the <gasps> the evening. She has a romance. All right, that is go, Danny. That is what she claimed. <laughs> Uh, she, that she was, we confirmed it, that she had, uh, she had an evening meal with a citizen, and then on her return, it, she saw it from a distance. She sustained several small burns whilst trying to pull, her, pull through the wreckage to see who had survived. And she's not said anything else? She simply said that she saw the explosion, that she did not witness anything out of the ordinary. She was quite upset, obviously, at the time. What bodies found? No, numerous, various bodies, all in states where we could not perform any magical rituals uh, to identify them any further, but there were numerous. Uh, the, we believed that your, where well, your father was found in his workshop, or, <clears throat> and he kind of like, doesn't look at Lucius when he says this, what remains could be found anyway, um, but it was noted by some several pieces of jewelry that we know to be of his, as well as uh, a particular marking upon his hand. Very cunning. Very cunning. Um, this is probably... I probably already know the answer to this, but we, we sent a letter from Callie's Rest a couple of weeks ago. We, we wrote a letter on behalf of Lucius and sent it to the Alan Astor estate. Uh, how was it sent? Via the, uh, uh, the messenger guild, the Aracopra? Yeah. yeah. Peculiar. No letter ever received to, to mine or the princes or any of the other nobles' ears. Well, maybe it's worth tracking if somebody found it, got it, received it, took it, destroyed it. I don't know. He takes a separate notebook and begins making notes in that. Letter. Callie's Rest, do you remember how long ago was this? Well, <laughs> it's just as we entered Callie's Rest. So it was about three weeks. Yeah. Right. Three, and a, three and a half weeks or so. It's been the worst month. It's been a bad month. Yeah. It's been a real bad month for you it, guys. It feels like a year. It must have been after. It must have been after the scrying <laughs> to confirm Lucius's death because we we heard that there was a notice that was circulated asking for info about Lucius and the airship crash, but it was rescinded after two weeks. It was rescinded because of the events with the family, and it was put out by Virian. So we sent the letter after mm. that. Mm. I will look into this. Whilst I cannot give you the name of a subject that I'm investigating, 
I cannot prevent you from heading to the Messenger's Guild and asking questions there. I cannot give you any confidential information from my investigation, but you are willing that you are free to speak to citizens as you wish. Um, Thank you, Steve. What if we need assets now for Quill? I've got assets. T to resurrect him today? Yes. Okay. Really? Do you have an Ethereum Platinum Rod? Uh, a perfect I've got the means to get one, at least the monetary value. I, this is a private conversation, I'm sure. We won't uh, distract you any longer. We, <coughs> if you do have word, uh, as, me, as you did with the guards, simply send word that Lucius Elanasto wishes to speak with. Ideally myself, the prince is often very busy. Come and see me where you can. Of course. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. I guess we'll head out then. Good luck. I'm going to see Nanny immediately. If that's okay. Uh, I've got credit from my father, who gave me some... I assume this letter was given to me because everyone thinks that my father's dead and obviously the, this will was passed on and he gave me assets. But I can use this to get Quill back. Okay. So... I assume I go to a... Quill! <laughs> you just go to a local, uh, to the bank, and <laughs> withdraw the yes. funds needed to buy an electron yes. if I can't Don't touch me, it's me. Um, one sure. of the businesses to loan me one, considering they bought my company. They owe you it. Yeah, um, I think that, that the best course of action is yeah. going to one of them. Not the asking them. That's all right. Yeah, I would like to go to a different one. Um, Etheron Refineries, Etheron, is probably they're the next manufacturing company. Yeah. If you don't want to go to Magruna, then they're the, the own, they're the other manufacturing company that bought assets. We'll go to Etheron. They're always nice at these gatherings. Sure. Yeah. Well, let's ask them if they can repay now with yes. physical rod instead of gold. Hmm. Yes. What are you thinking? Let's go. Okay. So is that what you want to do now? You want to visit um, Etheron Refinery? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think. Yeah? Yeah. And then we can visit so, Nanny when it's evening, and yeah. she might be home. She might be resting. If she's injured, yes. We don't want to disturb her right now. I want her to see me at my best. Heading into the industrial district takes you in a, into a very different area. Um, Lucia, she would know that this is called Glint Steel. The district has a name, it's called Glint Steel. Um, and it's so named because kind of linking between all the buildings, you see these heavy silvery chains and from them are these cages, these shiny silvery metal cages with a single like rod core um, oh, is it held between to them. What we, what Nova has? No, no, it's different. Okay. Um, and you've got that Ethereum cage thing. Yeah, that's like that's a, like a, yeah, it's like an orb kind of thing. Okay. Uh, these are like cages, like bird cages, but with like a rod in the middle. Um, and the no one of the other notable differences here. First of all, these are large buildings, and you can see that there are plumes of uh, furnace smoke kind of descend, you know, erupting from from these large kind of refinery factories. But also, the population massively changes here and you see dozens of halflings, like tons of halflings, and they're scrambling up the sides of buildings on these tiny little ladders. They scramble across chains. You can see them kind of chipping away at some sort of dust or like, you know, uh, material around these cores. Um, you can see some of them are carrying goods to and fro, and they just litter everywhere. They're kind of everywhere you look, there are these packs of halflings doing various industrial tasks. Um, the buildings here hum and create tons of noise. You can hear the pounding of blacksmith hammers. You can hear the hiss of steam and forges. Um, the whole place is quite hot and sweltering. But there is a stronger breeze here than anywhere else, which kind of helps alleviate some of the conditions. Hmm. You can see why I never come to the workshop. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Like walking through this heavy industrial area. But if you look at those cages, that's what my family makes. Inside those, the rods. So we just need one of those. We just need one of those. But we're planning. Uh, and then you kind of hear like, Hey, uh, well, what are you guys doing? 
We need to speak to the people in charge here. This little halfling, he takes off like a little flat cap and he's got a little vest on. He's got his sleeves rolled up and his arms are almost like stained. You can see that his arms are kind of stained partially blue, mm. like this kind of deep purpley blue. Um, and he kind of like brushes his hair a little bit and flakes of, you know, some sort of soot or grime kind of fall out. And he's like, sorry, what? We need to speak to someone in charge. What? Manager. Man manage? Manager? Yes, the people in charge. Oh, right, where, which, where, where, are you, where are you going? We need to just speak to them. Okay. He's like, all right. And he's like, gestures. <laughs> he's like, where are you, where are you guys, where are you, where are you from? Uh, here. Bang, bang. <laughs> Yeah, you're not from here. Look at it, we're a Joker guy. Yeah, Joker guy. How and far then a couple are of we? the other halflings are like, hey, uh, this uh, guy. That's, that's me. How far are we from the manager? <laughs> well, no, he's, he's up in his office. Yeah. Wait, you want you want Ethereum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethereum. Yeah. Ethereum. A full rod. Yes. You want, but you company. Yes. Ethereum. Yes. Right. But yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? Ah. Uh. Far away from here. Yeah, I can tell that about you. Hey, hey, look at them. Look at you, huh? And he's like looking <laughs> up. And he like looks at you. Like, no, hey. don't worry, don't do that. Hey! <laughs> and a couple of the other guys are like, hey! But could you just point the direction and we'll just go? No, 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 you get lost. Oh, right, okay. Like, Halflings, that's uh, the very vocal. What? The very vocal. Yeah, okay. I can't, I can't hear you. You can't hear a thing no, around it's here. So it's so loud. loud. Yeah. It's impossible. Can any podcast listener. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Sid's on it. It's fine. Um, and you basically, this little halfling just kind of weaves you through and he leads you into one of these large factories. Um, and you can see there are these kind of, uh, kind of like clockwork run conveyor belts yeah. where there's just like gatherings of um, metal plates and they're kind of being like smashed down into like thins and then another machine rolls them up and things like that. And it's basically like a big industry kind of like running through. Most of the workers are half elves, humans or halflings, but you do see the occasional high elf who seems to be inspecting the work more than anything. Or they might be checking machine or they're like reviewing plans of something and like showing the others, you know, like indicating on something like a piece that they want them to focus on or something like that. Um, but he leads you up a set of kind of like uh, stone stairs that lead up onto a second floor and then uh, down that he takes you down past uh, what seems to be some sort of like cafeteria or mess where a bunch of these halflings are like eating food from like you know large tables like long diner tables it takes you past that into another corridor another set of staircases and now finally the kind of banging becomes reduced and reduced and reduced um, almost as if kind of walking through layers of magical protection against the noise oh, right. as it just kind of becomes duller and duller and duller um, and the little halfling is like, hey, yo, oh, sorry, I keep forgetting, <laughs> forget about the sound barriers all the time, my hearing goes, um, hey, uh, so, here you go. Is this the right place? Well, you, I mean, I can't, this is just the manager of this, this warehouse. Okay, okay, I guess that'll... I mean, I can't take you to go see the head of the family, you know? Uh, right. Why not? Well, they're, they're not here. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? They're not here? They live up in the, in the nobles and stuff. They live in the house. That is true, yes. Oh, we'll speak to your manager, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, are you, I'm guessing you buy it, right? You, you're here to buy, uh, you know, yes, rods so or pressed Ethereum? A, a deal. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to speak to, you want to, speak to this guy. Yeah. It's like, okay. And then he kind of, like, gives you a little tip of the hat. Cool, thank, thank you. Thank you. He scurries down the stairs. I like that guy. Um, and you see that there is a large kind of mahogany, kind of, a, you know, double doors, um, and there is a, uh, an elven woman sat behind a desk, like a secretary, and she has various ledgers behind her in a large bookcase and quills and inks. And she kind of looks over, like, kind of lowers her spectacles, like, yes, can I help you? Are you here uh, on business? Uh, yes, sorry to disturb you. I know you're very busy. She kind of looks oh, semi-recognizing you, Lucius. Uh, yes, but it's, it's fine. Do you have an appointment? No, but uh, this is a matter of urgency. You were recently sent uh, a message, right? Or at least one of your superiors, perhaps. Um, to whom was the message addressed? I assume the owner. Uh, Whether this Lord, was Lord Ethereum? Yes. Um, I'm afraid that, the, well, I wouldn't necessarily have those informations. Is there something that was supposed to be passed down to, to the manufacturer? Potentially, if not, could you put us in touch with him? Lord Ethereum? Yes. I, uh, I can certainly send a message um, on yes. your behalf, and she kind of takes out a roll of parchment, 
Um, you're, you don't wish to speak? You're not here to trade with the, the manager? We could, if you know what this message entails. I assume you've heard the news of the Elanastor estate. I mean, uh, yes, that, that awful tragedy several weeks ago. I read about it in the, in the papers. Mm. Uh, well, a message has been sent out to him that some assets are to be paid. Oh, right, okay. And she kind of makes a note. Assets You've not to heard be of paid. this then? I, I'm afraid not, no. In which case, we need to speak to him directly. And whom is uh, calling? Uh, we are speaking on behalf of the El Nasto estate. Okay, she kind of makes a note. Um, what, on behalf of the El estate, are, are you representing them legally? Yes. All right, deception check. Mm-hmm, real good at that. That was a plus five. Eight! <laughs> oh. okay. It's like, all right, uh, okay. Uh, well, um, uh, well, I, I can send this. Uh, he probably won't receive it until this evening, however. How can I speed these things up? I, uh, well, I'm, I'm, sir, I'm afraid that I'm just the secretary for this manufactory. I, I don't really deal with the head of the noble house directly myself. You, I could, yeah. I, one moment. And she kind of gets up and she goes over to the door, a second door that leads into obviously some office beyond opens it, steps in, and you hear whispered kind of hushed tones. It's on behalf of the Elanestos. Yes, I know. He really wants to speak with the Lord the head of the house. I don't, he, he says it's an urgent. It's about assets. All right, okay, well, all right, yes, okay. And he kind of steps out. She's like, um, well, actually, the manager of the manufactory says that he's more than happy to speak to you uh, temporarily, uh, briefly. Perfect, thank you. All right, um, and she gestures inside. Uh, and opens the door, and you see a kind of very plush-looking office, um, at the end of which kind of sat at another kind of very regal-looking desk. Uh, there are various prototypes of these Ethereum cages kind of scattered all around, and the man's desk is almost like an architect's. It's kind of like levered up. You can see a large sheet of parchment, and he's, you know, drawing or sketching something there, um, and kind of peering from behind it with these thick kind of spectacles on that he raises initially is a uh, middle-aged high elf man, uh, dark hair but streaked with grey um, and he's wearing a, a fine vest kind of trimmed in a kind of floral pattern and he kind of looks up and he looks over at Lucius. No, can't be. Can't be, you're dead. I don't Lucius? Think I, don't think I am, yes. Lucius Viru and Illuminasne? I haven't seen you. He like peers over and he gets up and stands up and you can see he walks with a limp and he pulls out a cane he kind of limps his way over. Um, you would probably recognize this fellow. He is the younger brother of the Ethereum family. Um, his name is Matthias uh, Ethereum. And he looks over and he, he's kind of the black sheep of the family. Very, very intelligent. Uh, has created a lot of uh, innovations in Ethereum design. But is known as being not very good socially. Um, is much better left into his study in his office than anywhere else, um, and was never very, pop you know, very popular amongst the more high society. Matthias. Uh, yes, yes, uh, Matthias Ethereum, and he kind of shuffles over and he offers out a hand, like Lucius. I could have sworn that I read that you were dead. Yes, that's what people have been led to believe. How? How curious. Now um, it's important that you keep this to yourself. However, a message has been sent out to all the companies that have bought assets. Yes, 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 the, the, the various families. We, the, uh, we attended a thing at the palace. Uh, I bought several of your, your father's designs, uh, some of your sister's work as well, I believe. I'm, I am so sorry, I'm so terribly sorry. Yes, of course, uh, you, you, you must know about the news. Um, I'm so sorry for your loss. That's okay. Um, so in terms of the payment, is that something you can deal with? Well, um, I mean the. Uh, I mean, I don't know about. Uh, uh, you say there was a request for assets or something. I'm, that sounds more like. That sounds more compensation. Like, uh, well, I've not heard of it myself. That sounds more like my, my brother's work more than anything. Um, I generally tend to deal with the the day to day trade with, um, you know, shipments and travels. People that want to buy Ethereum. Uh, various, uh, you know, their own Ethereum cages or, or in, uh, components for manufacturing. I was just um, admiring your designs. They are phenomenal. 
Oh, yes, thank you. I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, well, it's actually uh, based on some of your sister's work, I believe, on Adair's work. Um, they you had some are. very curious, very curious ideas about, uh, about Ethereum capture. Um, very fascinating stuff. A very, very smart young woman she was. Yes, very good. Uh, mm. But yes, I'm, I'm, I, I'm afraid that uh, anything involving the prince, and I'm afraid that I'm not... Uh, generally, I'm not very welcome amongst that sort of society. Um, but if there's any general trade, uh, I'm more than happy to help, uh, obviously. Uh, well, maybe you can help me. Yes. Uh, I don't wish to take any more of your time or any of our no, time. No, no, it, it's, it's really no pleasure. The, work, the workers do most of the work. I'm mainly just left up here to work on designs, really. Um, How about? Kind of kept away from everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know that feeling. Yes. So, in terms of this deal, could I pry you for, you're so close to the warehouse, could we borrow or take an electron rod as part payment? Oh, well, well, um... Ethereum. Ah. And platinum. I mean, I mean, we, we just have the Ethereum rods here. I mean, I, I, could, I, I could sell you one, but, I mean, without conferring with my brother first, I'd, I'd be hastened to sign off anything that is, is involving some sort of deal with the prince, but... I mean, I, I can happily trade you one now if, if you have the coin. Mm. Well, I do have the coin, not on me, but... Well, a bank transfer can be uh, yes. arranged if you have the money in your account. Let's do that, and um, then obviously any compensation can be owed back to me. Yes, sir. Um, th that, I'm sure that will be dealt with as normal. Well, assets are to be repaid by Ethereum to the Alanasto estate anyway, and this rod that we need is quite urgent. We can't really... It's asking for an early withdrawal. Yeah. I, 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 uh, well, first of all, hello, uh, yes. Stray Faganazzi. Um, I'm assuming you're companions of Lord Elanestos? I am. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, you are right. If, if, if that is the case, um, obviously I, I do only have yours and Lord, Lord Elanestos' word, not that I doubt it, um, but simply I, 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 I couldn't authorize that. I couldn't authorize that. I, I'm happy. I, I just handle regular trade, I'm afraid. I, I'm not really trusted with that sort of thing. Oh, but I trust you very much. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you, but yes, I'm afraid that it still doesn't change the fact that I, I simply cannot sign off on that sort of thing. Now, our families have always been good to each other, have they not? Uh, yes, yes, they have. Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, your, your father was always very, very kind to me. Um, and I've always respected your work. Well, perhaps, perhaps if... All right, perhaps, um, perhaps we could draft up a, a, a brief agreement yes. um, that... Uh, if if this compensation is owed, then then the price of the the rod will be subtracted from anything that Ethereum owes you. But if this is perhaps if this is if the compensation is not completed, then you would owe the company money as a poor a normal trade. Absolutely. You're, you're, that, never that go seems back that, on their word. Do well, they? If that's agreeable, I, I could have my secretary draft up a brief agreement. Let's do that immediately. All right. All right. Would you like a drink? I have, I have some fine brandy. Well, one of us doesn't drink, but she likes to have a cup. Uh, the rest of you? <laughs> Sneak! Sneak! <laughs> Nothing for the goblin. Ah! Ah! Nothing for is the that, goblin. Is that a goblin? It might be. How fascinating! And he kind of gets up and you, he completely forgets about anything else. And he limps and he like, looks over at the goblin like... I'm never getting red. Fantastic! Wow. Can we... I'm a red goblin! Can I, can if I try could, something? Is it okay if... Is, this, if, is he yours? No. And he like Smeek comes over and like holds onto your leg. While there's this big distraction, yeah. I'm gonna ask Nova to do as many sketches of these prototypes as possible. <laughs> okay. That's just on his desk. All the ones that are around. All the ones that are around. Yeah. What's your intelligence? My intelligence. Yeah. Just straight up intelligence. Yeah. Fifteen. Plus Fifteen. Two. Maybe you can make like one, like a decent sketch. Like in the amount of time this is taking, you're not gonna have a lot of time to what like. What if I go make invisible? It. Huh? What if I go invisible? Then you just, you just it's the time. It's the time. I know, but I just hang around a bit, innit? I mean, you <laughs> could do that. If you want to do that, if you cast invisibility, sure, go for it. How distracted does he look? He's looking He's at a goblin. goblin. <laughs> so very. What, what do you want me to say? He's looking How, at a goblin. Can you, do you want all of them? Ask your secretary ones, to okay, I'll, start I'll the just, agreement. I'll start sketching. Yes, and yes, then you can of course. Have yes. So cool. much time. Yes. Smeek. Yes, absolutely. Smeek. Smeek, it has a name. Fascinating. Always heard stories about yeah. goblins. Um, yes, very well. Hang on, give me a moment. Ambrosia, Ambrosia, 
could you, I, and he kind of steps outside for a moment, and he's just completely left you guys in the room, and you can hear him kind of like, say, yeah, an agreement, um, just with the terms of, and he describes the same terms, of basically, as long as that you are genuinely owed compensation, it'll be taken from that. If not, then you'll owe Ethereum the same amount of money. Um, but you, to, to note, this is only one part of what you need for Quill. This is the Ethereum rod. You need would need platinum. platinum to kind of surround it, basically, which means going and buying some raw platinum and having it affixed to it. Um, carry on. Give me a second. Not this week, buddy. Yeah, oh, maybe no. we could, it depends on that. If you fuck around, we have a like, platinum. You could touch. just go don't fuck around more. It's this fucking goblin. We, we <laughs> every scene he just jumps up <laughs> and then delays us by like twenty minutes. Then you need to get rid of the goblin. <laughs> Throw him off the edge. Oh, we'll come back by Pegasus. Yeah. <laughs> We yeah. have a you literally can't get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Could that be melted down? How Sorry. much is it worth? One thousand gold. Sure. Bada bing. So what? the Ethereum rod's going to cost too. seven thousand gold, and then you can go and find a blacksmith to melt down the statue to coat the rod. Yeah, that here. Got a platinum statue. Yeah. This is a refinery. They'd have furnaces okay. and stuff. From the Night Eyes Keep. Oh, Jesus. What's his name again? Matthias. Matthias. Uh, he comes yeah. back and he's like, oh, if I could get you to sign here, Lord. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I haven't done this in so long. Um. <laughs> he watches to make sure you sign. <laughs> okay, fantastic. And he takes that. Nice. Well, um, I, I can send word uh, to go and get the, the core. Is that is that all? Yeah. Oh, uh, one more oh. request. Yes? Uh, I assume Nova tells me that you've got the platinum. Mm -hmm. Can we surround this rod with this platinum using your... I hold up the statue. Um, yes, yes, that should be doable. A, a strange reason to do so. I'm assuming that, that you don't need the core for Ethereum refining. You, you need it for some other purpose? Yes, yes prototyping. Uh, very well, yes, oh, very well, yes. Um, um, yes, uh, I can have one of the engineers do that for you, or you can go and do it yourselves if you feel confident. I promise you, if anything comes of this, and we have a new revolution in Ethereum collecting, You'll be the first to know. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Well, continue to work together. Uh, I'm sure that my, my brother would wish to speak to you, with you more about this. Uh, like I said, I'm more just about the thing. Um, may I speak to the goblin now? Sure. All right. I'm not speak, the... be nice. Uh, hang on. I need to try and remember uh, the fragments. Um, no. Gorak Vadar. Smeek. Gorak. He like looks like confused. Like Smeek looks at him like really confused. And he's like, Oh, uh, it's very fast. Um, uh, uh, Vedan Matthias Alec Kukaren Deathka? It's me. Velek Vora Goren Death. And he like pokes at his cane. And it's like, <laughs> oh, Vek Vek, Vek Vek Dunbara. <laughs> yes. Uh, he, he reaches out a hand and Smeek like shakes his hand a little bit. Uh, it's like fascinating, oh, fascinating. What an unusual oh, culture. Can you, uh, Trade him. can you translate? What do you mean? Well, I mean, I, I learned a little goblin from, from old texts, yes. And what were you saying to him? Uh, I, I simply introduced myself. Uh, I, I said, it is nice to meet you. Um, and he said, you speak a goblin, that's strange. I said, I'm Matthias, I've tried to learn. Uh, and ah. and then he asked if he could have my stick, and I said no. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! Wow. Very, very, very uh, charming. Yeah. But yes, it's. Uh, I don't strange. think we've heard Smeek be called charming yet. But there's. A I mean, he's thing. monstrous, but also charming. <laughs> yeah. No, we haven't seen anyone well speak to him before. Well, it is a strange language. Obviously, it was. Um, they, they were forces of of, of uh, the Court of Shadows. Um, but there were a few documentations found. Their engineers were quite brilliant. A lot of early Ethereum technology uh, used some uh, of the Court of Shadows' ideas for collecting energy. Right. Um, it's where uh, Veldespirk, the gnome engineer who created the Ethereum refining process, took a lot of his learning from. So you learned Goblin too? Well, a little, a little bit, yes. Just because I thought it was quite fascinating. Hmm. Um, Got any books on it? No, no. I'm afraid this was many, many, many years ago. Fascinating. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, we I, must yes. go. Yes, 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 please, yes, yes. Um, I'll come with you and, and have an engineer uh, come over and assist you with the, the process. You've always been so kind. No, no, it, it's, it's my pleasure. I mean, I, I, I remember that uh, you, I, I remember that you had some trouble with some of the other boys and, and girls from the other families. Um, yes. 
the, the Magronas in particular. I remember my, my younger sister also, she had some, some trouble with that family. And Who doesn't, really? <laughs> well, they've grown up a little now, but yes, yes. Uh, still troublemakers. I've met one of them. I disagree. Mm. Well, yeah, well yes. what doesn't kill us, right? Mm, indeed. Uh, he kind of trundles down the stairs. He calls over a little halfling engineer and has a brief conversation with him, like, in the halfling light. So, so, hang on, you want, you want to melt down this, and then you coat the rod in it, right? Is it loud now again? Yeah, it's kind of loud now, so he's kind of shouting again. Now, is it... Huh? Sometimes the rod is... The metals are converted into an alloy. Are you sure it's the surrounding that you need? Um, she just said a rod of ethereum and platinum. So is it an alloy, or is it a surrounding? Can I make a memory check or something? Yeah, that's what, what do you think that book is? That's your memory check right there. It says a rod of Ethereum or Platinum worth 8,000 gold. That's Eight. what that Nova's just like, ah, oh, I can't remember. Like, I mean, she, she, said, did you, she said she needed it as a focus. It, so... You can make an Arcana check if you want, Lucius. Yeah. Okay, right. sure. Based can on I make one? Remembering sure. boring meetings and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd say I have advantage on the roll for Lucius as well. A natural 20! Oh! oh nice. Do you mean to roll for another natural 20? Sure. <laughs> you can still roll, Kim, you still might know. 13. You can still roll Arcana. Please get a natural one. It was an eight, a slightly cocked eight, but plus <laughs> seven, so 15. 15, yeah, okay. You think back. So for Nova, you're kind of like racking your memory and it's, it's not that you remember what she said, but you remember her talking about how it has to funnel the soul. Like it, it acts as a conductor to channel the soul back into the body. And yeah, like, you don't think that just Ethereum surrounded by Platinum necessarily would do that. You think it has to be, like, uh, the, the two mixed together. Like, it has to create a unique rod of this of uh, an alloy. Um, because otherwise, Ethereum on its own has an enhancing property, and Platinum just holds magic really well. Mm -hmm. The two combined is what's needed. And for Lu you, Lucius, it's not that you know about Resurrection, but the idea of, like, again, you know that that Ethereum rod on its own isn't going to do anything. It would just amplify a spell. And you don't think that that's not what's necessary. You think that it needs to be a, a, an alloy necessarily, a bonded together process. Okay. Uh, yes, we need this to be alloyed. So you need it, so you need it to be alloyed. You don't want it surrounded. You want to... You wanna... Alloyed, yes. All right, okay, that's cool. Yeah, we can do that though. Yeah, yeah, we can make that. Perfect. I mean, are you sure? That's a lot of Ethereum. It's absolutely necessary. All right. I mean, I'm not going, I'm not going to question the elves. I'm not going to do it. I did it before. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, all right. And he's like, well, and he heads off. Um, and within an hour, he comes back. Uh, and it's in a sealed kind of container. And he's like, all right. Here you go. Now, it's lucky. I'll take it. <laughs> he's like, let me hold my own life. Yeah, I'll head. take oh, the rod. Yeah. It's lucky I remember this sort of thing because this was kind of being experimented on to make the Ethereum collection more potent. Right. But it will work, right? It should. Far better than... Why would Piri care? Why would Piri well, care? Well, hang on. <laughs> should be far better than it being surrounded by it, which would probably not do so much. Perfect. Uh, well, should we go do it then? Absolutely. Yes, no time to waste. <laughs> right. Tom's like... Well, I mean... We have 25 minutes to get this done. <laughs> but here he also... Yeah, all right. Bring on. back the bird! <laughs> you make your way to Stars Star yeah. Cathedral. A beautiful crystalline roof. It's blown up. <laughs> <laughs> Starbane's just sat there. Hey. Yo, burn your bird. <laughs> make your way back and... Chaos. The place is quiet. And... Um, yeah, they, they look around. Elris, uh, is it Elris? I can't remember what I said. Eris. Eris uh, is surprised to see you and looks up and is like, well, you've returned far, faster than I expected. Don't tell me that you've, I mean, do you, are you coming to check on your friend? I can assure you that they're perfectly fine. We have actually obtained the Platinum Ethereum Rod. I mean, uh, and then she sees Lucius. Lucius Virunello in Ernesto. It's so good to hear other people here say my full title. You... We held a service for you. You're alive? Honoured. Thank you. 
I'm so glad. And you can see she's genuinely relieved. She kind of comes up and kind of pats you on the arms like, I'm so glad to have one of our noble sons return to us. Yes, and hopefully more soon. Yes. Um, well, I, I'm assuming that Lord, Lord Elanesto had the funds for the, the rod you said. It was complicated, but we got it. Well, then we should see your friend returned. If they have a purpose with Hesper, then it's one that they should attend to as quickly as they can. Can I just say that... Yes? We are indebted to you for this. We've been through a lot this past month, and for us to have Quill back means everything. This is not... This is a ritual that takes considerable power. You know, many people believe that Siaska is gone from this world. That when Callus slayed her, that everything that was her has gone. But she isn't. She points up, and you can see through the crystalline kind of thing, you can see the cradle. She's always there, watching us. And this is difficult, and it is only through these components that I can channel her power, but for those who have a greater purpose, it is really no trouble at all. Come, and then she leads you over and she calls over several attendants who go and fetch Quill's body, mm. and they lay it on the altar, um, and she asks you to stand back. Um, would you mind keeping hold of that one? And she oh yeah, it. no problem, he ain't going anywhere. He like looks up at you, and he just sits on the floor and looks at the body. Quill! Yes, Flaps his Quill. Uh, just to double check, this is going to bring him back as an Arakokra, right? Yes. Okay. Just, yes. Yeah. That is why the rod is necessary, to funnel the soul into his body. I know that there are some druidic magics that can change their form and shape, but that's not my power. Um, uh, guys, um, speaking of debt and indebted and things like that, you guys, you saved me back in, uh, in you know, Voxar. And hopefully I've repaid it. Once I see Quill returned, I'll have repaid that debt. You saved my life, and I owe you that. You got me back to safety, and, or safety of some sort in Gusthaven. Well, yeah, yes, and without you, we wouldn't have him here now, so thank you. And also, you know, thanks for repairing the watch. I can use that to get back in some capacity, so... You know, once the bird is back... I think you should meet him. He's a very, very good man. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes! Really, Lucius. Like me. I mean, Sentry and Orion. Quill! <laughs> yeah. See, Smeek agrees. Sure. I mean, I met Sentry and she turned out to be, well, a guardian. <laughs> that was, that was, that's pretty cool. We have so much to teach each other. We'll have a long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> if I could ask for your moments, a moment of quiet. Will take some a little bit of time. She places Quill's body, and then the rod is basically placed upon his chest. And she speaks a few words and lets go, and it stands completely straight on his chest. And the light from the cradle begins to coalesce to a single beam of light that touches the tip of the rod. And for the rest of you, you watch as she just prepares this ritual. But, Quill, you all you have known is peace and warmth and safety. Oh dear. Your memories of, you know that you were once alive and there were things that you had to do and people that you travel with, but they're blurry now. You still feel a connection to them, a happiness when you think of them, but it's all blended together in a soft, kind of pleasant feeling of being at peace. And then you begin to feel a tug in your chest. And you don't have a form, so it's strange to feel something that you no longer have, but you feel this tug and a voice in your head, a woman's voice, a matronly, motherly voice, speaks. Do you want to go back? I do. You watch as what was before this kind of dull, soft glow, white light parts, and you're pulled through the opening, and your body, this astral body, reforms. The quill, an arakokra. The memories flood back. And although you, you still keep this lingering sense of peace, 
You've seen what's beyond. You knew that you were a noble soul and that if you were to die again, that's where you'll go, as long as your heart stays true. But you've seen beyond that now. And you see Erois, the planet, with a cradle around it, this coloured, multicoloured light, and you begin slowly drifting back towards it. And a familiar figure, a woman, black armour, a mantle of, of black flowers around her neck, carrying a lantern and a sword in one hand. And she looks down to you and says, so they have succeeded. I'm sorry, I have to make the journey again. Mm, it is my <laughs> honor to take this journey again, Chosen of Hesper. Be prepared and your, your God will see you before you arrive. Good luck. Will I have this chance again? What chance? If I was to come back here, will you be able to lead me back? Yes. But the next time, I'm afraid there will be no returning to Erois. Your friends have called you back once. It cannot be done again. The journey is too much for a soul to make twice. Okay. Good luck, Quillic and Kalar. Thank you. And you begin drifting slowly. And now as you pass through the atmosphere, through the cradle and into the atmosphere of Erois, you do catch a glimpse of something, a glowing light. You know the stories of Palador, he who brings light and warmth to the world. And it's always been envisioned as a, a flaming individual flying around the planet, casting light. But you see something different. You see a grand ship, and its sails are filled with a blazing golden light. And upon its deck, you can see automatons, metal machines like guardians, working the sails, pulling it free. And you can see it's patrolling, and at the helm, you see a kind of gruff looking man, golden skin and his hair is aflame, like a bright golden light. And he kind of nods at you as the ship sails past. And then as you pass through the cradle and into the atmosphere, another familiar figure waits. A man, a winged human man with a staff and a tome, stands before you. Second try. Not many get one. I'm glad that you do. Yeah. Um, They've gone to quite some lengths to bring you back. Where will I be returning to? Gusthaven. Quite a distance. Quite a distance. And the valley still waits for you, Quelican Kalar. As I said to you before, you must return. Only you can put it, can stop the storms. And there is a powerful relic there that you will need in the times to come. But, before you return, there is one thing. He reaches up with a finger and doesn't touch it, but kind of gestures it and points to your eye, the missing eye. And you feel something like a warmth. Good luck. And remember, ask the right questions. I will. And then you speed up and you suddenly feel a gasp of air and a rush of warmth and you see dazzling lights in front of you and you can begin to hear the murmur of people and chanting. And your eyes open. In fact, one eye opens and then there is darkness covering the other. Mm. And you re suddenly remember the eye patch, you remember your injuries. Uh, uh, hello? <laughs> and the rest of you, you see Quill's eyes open, you see him inhale. Hello, Lucius Nova. Well, who did you expect? I mean, hang on, hang on. So, and as Quill starts reaching up, you can see that behind this eye patch, there's like a glow, like a light is coming from behind the eye patch. I guess I, with one hand, Lift it up, take it off. There's a sudden kind of ah. blazing of light, like a kind of bright light is glowing from his eye, and then it dims and recedes. And where Quill once had an eye that was ruined, there is now an eye, but it is of a shimmering, swirling storm in the eye. Wow. <laughs> is it back? And you can see perfectly out of it. Oh. And in fact, you know that you, you can't just see through it. You can 
you can see more than just what other people can see through this. <laughs> oh my god, my perception's even higher. <laughs> <laughs> Not your perception you in terms eyes. of the skill. There is an intrinsic understanding that now, once per day, and I'll write you a thing for this, mm -hmm. you can ask a single question to see something that happened in the past of where you are, something in the now where you are not, or something that has not yet come to pass. Whoa, <laughs> dude! And you can basically ask a specific question, like what happened to this, and you will get up to a minute of a vision of something. So if, for example, you were about to go through a door, you could go, what's gonna happen when we go through this door? And then you will see a minute of the most likely thing to happen. And you oh, know, the, now to point out, yeah. you know that the threads of fate and fortune can change that significantly. Yeah. But you are, you would know the most likely thing. And you can also use it to basically, um, there's a spell, I can't remember, it's called Arcane Eye. You can cast that once a day, which basically allows you to put like a magical sensor somewhere and then you can see through that. Hmm. Or you can ask the same question about something that happened in the past of an immediate area and see up to a minute of that. See, Literally like that's so a raven. I mean, he has visions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, who done blew up Lucius's daddy? I don't know about that. He doesn't know about that yet. Doesn't know about yet. that. Doesn't know about that. Yet. Also, like I said, you only get a minute. So it's, you know, you would have to say, and it has to be a specific circumstance, like what, you know, what happened in the workshop of the Alan Astor estate? Yeah. What happens when we walk through that door? What happens when this guy leaves the room? It has to be a very specific certain That's circumstance. Crazy That's crazy town. As long as I ask the right question. Yeah. Yeah. My lady. No, that's it. Time episode's oh, over. Fuck. <laughs> fuck. Oh. With that, we're gonna end today's episode with Quill coming back. back. Guess who's back? Oh, he's back. Oh, again. But uh, and I'll write. I'll write you up a thing. That's one today. Huh? We melted his mini. Shit. No. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, we chucked it in the bin, so I was no. burnt it and cast it to the wind. So yeah, um, yeah, I'll write that out for you so you've got a thing. And we'll talk oh. about it just so you have a clear understanding of like how it works and stuff. That's incredible, um, I'm so happy he's back. Well look, everybody, you know, when you come back from the dead, you get a little upgrade. Nice. We just die huh? No, Juto didn't, because that was in the old campaign, Kim. Speaking of which, go to twitch.tv forward slash dnd after this. Uh, we're going to read out donations and then Patreons. Uh, uh, I'm oh just going to rattle so through these if that's cool. Rattle through. Mia yeah, Kitty yeah, donated. Great. Can't wait to find out what happened to Daddy. Hope he's all right. <laughs> and if not, because that's all anyone has been theorizing, then I send big hugs for Lucius. Yeah. Ola Renve, thank you very much. Jolty on Fire, happy one year, guys. Thank you very much. Yes. Night Nightjar, Night Jar, happy you. one year. Arrow's birthday anniversary thing. Thank you very much. Yeah. Kura Girl 129 donated. I got into HR from my ex. I remember watching you all, but Tom and Ree fighting your first dragon on stream. I finally started actively watching with Arrow's and spent the last two months binging Lightfall and now caught up. I won it up too. Uh, I think Kurigari129. Cannot wait for more. All you have to offer from Arrow's. Happy birthday, Arrow's. Two days before my birthday. Thank you all for joining me with the weekly DD. Thank you, Mark, for providing such a great GM example for many of us to follow. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. Uh, and Rakir. 1989, generous donation, thank you. This donation isn't enough, as I literally owe you guys my, my, owe you guys my life. Aww. A few months ago, uh, events in my life came to a crux and I tried to commit suicide. <gasps> Watching your stream was the reason I stopped my attempt from the bottom of my heart. Thank you all, thank you very wow. much. Thank you. Yeah. Now we can help, I read that one. Lightning Wing Dragon, thank you very much. Even the prince got brookstoned. Uh, get brookstoned. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Lone Wolf, hey there rollers, hope you are all well and having fun. I unfortunately can't stay, but here's a little something as a thank you for getting me into D&D. Been DMing it for a few weeks now. It's been the most enjoyable thing I've ever done in my life uh, in a long time. Thank you very much. Jimmy Kieber X to oh, 200! Wow. 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 Jimmy Kieber, happy birthday, Rose. Thank you very much, oh, Jimmy Kieber X. Thank you. Manu, quarter hundo, happy one year anniversary, Rose. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nightjar. I miss my sweet boy Scorb, but I'm so happy my precious son Smeek is still with us. Thank you yeah. Mark, for making a never ending supply of NPCs I want to adopt. Thank you very much, Nightjar. Mm. Quarter Hundo from Time Sorcerer. Looks like I'm forever relegated to VOD Squad because the stream starts while I'm in church. No. But I did catch up with this campaign last week and I'm going through Lightfall now. Love it lots and I miss Birdie very much, having only one eye myself. Okay, thanks very much, Time Sorcerer. Now you have a Sir Buffrey! 
Uh, happy one year in a row, side rollers. Oh, the places you'll go. Enjoying the campaign world as always. Anywho, I've got a Pegasus on my list, but I expect a plethora of other cool and unique beasts that have nice. evolved and adapted to the sky. Love your artwork. Love, Love it. Love it. Yes. Love it. Thank you, dude. So, but for you. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Uh, Bay that. Feather, thank you very much. I've got to get off to work now. Good luck with the Elan Lasto fiasco. I like hmm. that. Nice. That's the name of the chapter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, new Alex donated. Hey, guys, loving the Gus Haven episode. Uh, fighting the monolithic corporations of Big Ethereum, a dangerous quest. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Ace of Thorns. Smeek for t-shirt, <laughs> hashtag, thank you very much. <laughs> New Alex, don't you know about the burb? Well, everybody's heard that the burb has returned. Thank Oy. you very much. Bandai Nenzai, burb boy is back, baby. Thank you very much. <laughs> Azul Aura, one year anniversary. I thought doing daddy bets again would be fun for the occasion. I thought now I'm crying over Lucius like my heart. Lucius is too mature for daddies now. We have to, the bird boy back. Happy one year, keep being awesome, heart. Thank you very much, well, we Azul. We to reunite the team for our one year. Team yeah, reunite team is, is finally oh, back. Next nice. week, one of you will die. Oh. Uh, I don't wait to happen. Right, Patreons. Get rid of Piri. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Patreon, the Patreon app is really messing up, and I'm trying to scroll through the 64 I have to read. Uh, but I crashing. think what you need to do, Tom, is record a video of you just reading names out yeah. and put it up on the High Rollers D&D channel. We should sure. do that instead. Sure, though. we yeah. can do that. Uh, just, just Tom sat in here with a little like drink in my underwear, and then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. like three a.m. Yeah, hey right. guys. <laughs> oh, thank anyway. you. <laughs> right, with that, I'm really sorry. I'll do it. I'll do it as soon as I can. Yeah, he's gonna do it on the channel. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, go over to Twitch.tv forward slash Dindy now. Go yeah. there now. Ready for our next stream? Yeah. This is gonna happen in five minutes. The lightful yeah. characters. See you soon. Life from the heart of the